hey, hey, and good morning out there today. I don't know if my phone is working. I think I'm plugged in. And never can tell if anyone else is working or not. And my mic might be on. I'm barely getting heard. Hold on. I'm not having to stop the broadcast or what? All right, it says I'm live. Um, but I don't think anybody can hear me. Yeah, I'm going to mute. All right. All right, well, if you're just uh, tuning in, I'm Dan. I'm happy to this guy. I don't think my stream is working. I don't think any of you are here anyway. So. The channel I need to be on. Anyway, um, yeah, what I'm looking at is uh, to stay happy. And I think that sometimes in life uh, we get focused on the wrong things. And uh, you know, let's just say we get focused on the haters. You know, some, something that we're doing, uh, somebody sees that we're doing too well, and then we get happy about it. And, you know, none of this is being hated, so. Oh, hold on, maybe it is. Okay. I have to pull the wire out. I wish my mic was working. There's going to be like a 30 second delay and I'll be able to see if my mic is working. I'm still, I'm still not hearing anything. Oh, oh man, there's something. Except it's always sound like that now. This has to be replaced. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. Uh, Things in. Well, I just uh, unmuted myself, but I'm still not being heard. Let me make an adjustment. All right, I'm going to mess around with my, my camera uh, and see if I can't change the settings to get the sound a little better. Because my sound... I'm going to mess around with my camera. Yeah, I should sound awesome, but I don't. All right. Uh, 
Let me just keep messing around real quick. Let's see if I got found again. I don't think I do. I just found if I need that. Oh man, yeah, see, I need, I need that. Alright, well, this kind of sucks. I wonder if I got sound now. I'm trying to make this work. Let me go to the life cam. All right. I wonder if you guys uh, are going to try to hear me now. No, the life cam is not on. I wonder what's taking me All right. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Am I barely coming in? All right, I'm going to check myself. Hold on a second. Well, I still don't have sound. Oh, you guys, this is a bug. This is this is totally bugging. I totally don't have sound. Does this mean does this mean I have sound now? I don't know. All right, let me adjust my settings. Desktop microphone. I guess I have sound now. I don't know if it's out of this thing. I think that's going to suck. All right, let me try to make an adjustment. Hopefully I'll still have sound. All right, so this is testing again. I think I might've just lost my sound. That's sucky. All right, I think I figured it out. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. Now I can bounce over to the Hangouts. All right, so now I'm gonna go to Hangouts. All right, now I'm gonna so I got the biggies chilling in the house. I got uh, the aquarium cop, wakey wakey, eggs and bakey, no sound. It works. Danny Crack Corn, I don't care. I hear you on the webcam, webcam only, not the headpiece. Now it works. There's the hangouts. Yes, head mic working. Yeah, so now you guys can hear all this stupid cheesy stuff I'm going to say. So this is uh, good. I'm listening to myself. Um, yeah, that's pretty cheesy. Oh, oh, did I screw something up? I don't mind. All right, no, I didn't. All right, well. Anyway, if you're uh, here joining me in the morning, it's only taking me 10 minutes to figure out how to fix my sound. Uh, <laughs> yeah, super goofy. I'm going to have to put something in the description that says just skip to 10 minutes.
when I've got my thumbs up because I've got sound. Anyway, Big East, really good that you could join us. Um, and really good that uh, Bjorn is here. And I hope you guys are living the dream. So what's going on with you this morning, Biggies? All right, screwing around and fixing some stuff in the background there. I guess uh, for those of you that are just tuning in, um, the Big E's has uh, joined me in the Hangouts. I dropped the Hangout link, uh, so uh, if anybody wants to come uh, come say howdy, cool, cool. I got the Aquarium Cop uh, chilling in the chat. And uh, now we have uh, Jean Michaels. Nice to see you here, John Michael. So uh, I was playing around on my YouTube channel uh, today, and I realized that um, Aquarium Cops comments, four awesome comments got flagged because YouTube thought you uh, were possibly a scammer. And so they, they held those comments for a review. I thought that was funny. I got a really awesome comment from you, Gene. I was, yeah, that was a really good insight into some of the, and some of the stuff you're going through uh, with the haters. And I read your comment and I thought, man, I'm going to have to go up online and just have a stream called How to Stay Happy. And so that's really because uh, I was reading Gene's uh, stuff. And uh, I was thinking about Aquarium Cop. Is that the cop all? got in trouble. The what? The cop got in trouble. No, I don't know. He just wrote JMG. In the chat, so I don't know what he's doing. But uh, no, so uh, super quick, I want to give uh, I want to give the biggies a chance to say howdy to everybody out there. Good morning. How everybody doing this morning? I guess we're getting some more people coming in. That's a good thing. Yep, more yep. people, more fun. Yep, yeah. So if uh, you're just joining us, uh, I see Lumpy Dog uh, just uh, jumped in. That's good times, good times. John Lumpy. says he's sleeping. But I guess the, the big thing here, I was reading what, what you wrote, Gene, and I was thinking, you know, sometimes I can focus on the haters and, and I can focus on the people that don't like what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. I, I know that I, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, uh, making people happy. Sometimes when I make people happy, it makes people mad, you know, like sometimes when I feed uh, – homeless people and if they're by the business you know the business is like hey don't 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 feed them you know we don't want them around here and uh i've gotten that you know a couple times and i think yeah you know as a business owner if i'm feeding the bums that are sleeping you know out at your place then you know once in a while when i get caught doing good then some people get pissed off and they're just like we don't want that around and uh yeah i don't know it's kind of a toss-up and i i realized you know, I guess Gene sees the same thing because he's doing something awesome or he's doing something different and somebody's going to like it and somebody else is not going to like it. But I realized today, I think it's about the focus, you know. Am I going to look at all the people that don't like what I'm doing and decide to listen to them when they're obviously filled with hate? I, I don't think that's my ball game today. So uh, what I get to focus on is the people that I really like in my life and the people that are showing me that they like what I'm doing. And then I entertain those people in my life. And then I get a lot of people that love what I do. And uh, I entertain those people in my life. And that's that's my focus, you know. I was on my way to work today. And, uh, you know, uh, I looked over at a school bus. 
and I looked at some kids on the side of the road, and the next thing I know, there was a car stopped in front of me, and I hit my brakes, and it wasn't it wasn't good enough, you know. I, I got my wheel to the side, and uh, yeah, I took out their back freaking uh, corner tail light. I I did more damage to my truck than I did to their car. I was like, damn, you know, they tore my car up from the front fender. I need a new driver's door now. Totally. I couldn't even find my rear, my uh, left side mirror. Anyway, I got out of the car and I looked at the person and uh, I was like, man, are you okay? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm not even scratched. Thanks. You know, that's awesome. And she's like, looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, it's just awesome. I was like, there's all these kids around. I was like, nobody's hurt, you know? I, I rolled up on the sidewalk. Some dude's like, dude, I think you're drunk, you know? And I'm, I'm just like, yeah. He's like, you almost hit me. And I'm like, yeah, but I didn't. So we're both lucky there. And uh, he tried to say some other stuff. And I said, sir, I just I just got in a car accident and I need to talk with her. And if you're not injured, just, just walk on. <laughs> you know, I'm sure I'll be calling the cops. So, uh, yeah, have a nice day and just be grateful that I didn't run you over. I says, we all got lucky here because nobody got a scratch on them. And I says, and my truck took a beating, man. And uh, I go, what do we got to do, you know? And uh, she's like, I don't have insurance. And I'm like, well, I got insurance, and I totally nailed you, so I'm totally at fault. So, And she goes, is it that simple? And I said, yeah, that's why you get insurance, you know, because accidents happen. And I was like, at least nobody's harmed. I was like, your truck probably going to you know, about 500 bucks to get it fixed. And she's like, well, it might be more than that. And I go, well, I got insurance. So I was like, company will sort it out. And uh, I looked at my truck and I says, well, luckily it's a beater work truck. So now it's just got a few more beatings, you know? And uh, yeah, I try to open my door, get my driver door and it doesn't really open, you know, it kind of halfway. And I just kind of laugh and I go, I'm just really grateful. Bottom line, nobody's injured. That's the real deal here. You know, cars can get fixed. And uh, I just wish that kid didn't jump in front of you. I go, man, I was kind of, I was like, man, I want to be mad at that kid for not behaving. But, you know, no kids got hit today. And uh, that was the key. And, and you know, we got done exchanging information. And I says, hey, ma'am, I'm, I'm really sorry that this had to, that we had to experience this today together, you know, because I'm totally at fault. And I kind of, yeah, you know, probably wasn't paying the attention that I should have being distracted by school buses and kids. But I said, I guess that's the important thing, you know, as I said, there's a lot of important stuff going on at, at you know, four o'clock in the afternoon. And I just wasn't, you know, my eyes weren't where they should have been. And I'm truly sorry. And she just said, you know, she says, I think the most important thing you said is that kids, uh, nobody got harmed. And she said, I got four kids. And she says, and I guess that's really what I'm grateful for. She goes, I'm disappointed. I'm going to lose my car, you know, for while well, it's getting fixed. But she says, the important part is you're right. It's like, you know, we n none of us has a scratch and we're both going to walk away. And uh, she says, yeah, not a good experience. But she says, I want to say thank you because she says your calm, cool demeanor is amazing. And I was like, well, I says, well, how else can I be when I nail your vehicle? And uh, she says, you know, you've had a smile on your face the whole time. Uh, and I said, that's that's just who and what I try to be, you know. I said, I can't exactly be mad at you when I hit you, you know. Uh, I said, but I'm really, you know, happy that once again nobody was hurt. And I was like, I'm sure with that you got better things to do and talk to me all day. And I says, I'm already a little on the late for work. So I says, yeah. I says, hey. Uh, you know, get a hold of my company and they'll fix it for you. And she just looked at me and she says, you know, for uh, for having this happen, she says, uh, I'm I'm leaving with a smile on my face and I'm really grateful that you got insurance. That was it. She shook my hand and disappeared. And that's my day, you know, and I look at the things in life and uh, I get to realize today that, yeah, I can focus on the fact that my truck's beat up and I got to pay some stuff or, you know, I got to focus on the fact that there was, you know, a few kids around and yeah i didn't nail the guy on the sidewalk today so and i and i think about gene and other people that are going through what they're going through and i and i get uh reminded real quick that it's about the things that i got my focus on on life and i realize you know i got a lot of fish and they get to take up a lot of my focus and i got a lot of really awesome people in the fish family 
uh, and they take up a lot of my focus. And, you know, I got a few people in life that, you know, aren't so happy that I'm happy, Dan. And, and I'm like, what, what can I tell you, buddy? You know, not everybody gets to live like I get to live. And uh, I guess by realizing that some people live in darkness and that's just how that's the only way to express it. You know, like the ring I wear on my finger, there's there's more dark in the world than there is light. To realize that sometimes I can be a light in the darkness, you know, just a smile sometimes is all somebody needs. Or uh, sometimes they just need a burrito, I, you know, a nice warm burrito at three in the morning, uh, you know, when you're chilling on the side of the road. And that's the bums out here, man. They're breaking out umbrellas now because it's been hailing on them. So they got these little umbrellas and they're sitting on uh, egg cartons, or not egg cartons, but milk crates, you know. And they just make their little signs and they just, you know, hunker down. And I guess a lot of people give them cash. They probably spend that on the booze. That's probably why they're homeless. And, you know, I'll roll up with the burrito that I got to heat up in the 7-Eleven microwave. I got two, two 7-Elevens now that let me use their microwave to cook food that isn't uh, 7-Eleven food. And that's, that's pretty cool because, you know, a 7-Eleven burrito is like three bucks and a this other store I shop at, I can get three burritos for three bucks, you know, so I can, yeah, more food for the buck. And I think uh, 7-Eleven doesn't mind that I, yeah, I shop at another place. And I, I guess 7-Eleven, they, the guys told me at 7-Eleven, he goes, man, don't make them leave before you feed, you know? And I, I just laugh the food, you know, cause he's got a terrible accent. And I go, man, they're hungry and he, he he laughs and he does this little you do good a little symbol that he gives me and uh yeah so i don't know i guess what i get to look at is how i stay happy is i could focus on the fact that i got some haters and i could battle them and i could do whatever but then i'm i'm not doing uh i'm not doing what i'm supposed to be doing you know i'm focusing on the hate and then i get filled with hate and then i'm a hater and then i'm like want to hate them back and then all i'm trading is hate just as fast as me and you will trade a dollar bill. So, uh, yeah, that's why I kind of had this little, uh, I don't know, how to stay happy. And I realize that in my life today, I have to share not only the things I like with other people in my life, but I have to share the things I truly love. And then uh, people look at me and they're like, yeah, but you truly love your life. And I go, I live a crazy freaking life with crazy people that, I don't know, ask me all kinds of crazy questions and try to get help with the most... I don't know, unique situations. And, you know, I get asked out to, I don't know, coffee or, or, hey, can we go to Sherry's and sort this out? And I'm always like, ah, man, can't you just ask me to build a house or frame a window or like unclog a toilet? Like some shit that a man can actually do, you know? But I don't know, other times I get asked, like, how do I sort out a relationship or how do I change this or how do I become this? Or a few people once in a while are like, how do I just be a better person? It only happens to me a couple times a year, but uh, I like that because if I can give somebody advice on how to be a better person or how to have a, a better smile and they're uh, somebody that's in my life, then I've got a better person in my life or I've got a person in my life that's got a better smile or I get happier people. And I think that's why I like to go out of my way and help uh, people smile or help people stay happy or even why I produce these super cheesy videos at like, you know, my time in the morning is like 730 and I should be asleep. But, you know, I was out all night doing, uh, I don't know, crazy fun stuff. I probably went out and had a couple, uh, well, a couple cups of coffee that had two shots in them that I shouldn't have had. Uh, so I don't know. Sometimes coffee doesn't affect me, but, you know, I finished off my little deal I got home. I did a bunch of water changes. Um, I started some water for some more water changes. And I thought, Dan, why don't you just boost up a live stream and say howdy? All right. I was just seeing, checking. I had to flip screens. Biggie is hanging out and uh, staying tough. So uh, I'm uh, looking at his fish right now. That's pretty awesome. And uh, I'm going to cruise over into the chat and see what kind of awesomeness I have been missing. I'm going to pop out my chat. Um, let's see. John says he's sleeping. John says, uh, hi, Lumpy. Let me sub. 
Uh, Lumpy Dog says he just subbed Gene. And uh, that's awesome, you guys. I dig it when people come into my uh, chat and then start making friends. And then, you know, they got some cool people. Uh, they're gonna, you guys are going to learn something new from each other, bottom line, about how to keep your fish happy. And that's what I really dig. Hey, hey, I see uh, Parameth Aquatics. Uh, I think I think you're out of India, if I'm not mistaken. So that's cool. It means I'm streaming around the world. That's a double thumbs up. Uh, Aquarium Cop says hi lumpy dog says you can't change the past you can only deal with the current and be hopeful for tomorrow we each choose what we focus on the good the bad or the other what's the other hmm anyway yeah I guess uh, somebody told me one time you have the you know have the the bad dog and you feed the bad dog and the bad dog grows so you put your energy in the bad things you get bad things back because bad, I think, is ultimately what grows. You have the good dog. You feed the good dog. The good dog grows. And what do you have? Well, you got a good dog. And, and good, good around you grows. I think that's uh, what I look at with the people in my life. I like to fill myself up with good people. But I don't necessarily have all the greatest people in my life. I, I have a few people in my life. I don't want to say they're bad people. I don't know. Maybe some people get bad hearts. Um. But I have some people in my life that are definitely trying to change their heart. And I think that's uh, that's difficult. And it doesn't happen overnight. I think it takes time as one starts to refine. Uh, you have to identify who and what you are and the things that you don't like. We'll just say haters. And then uh, you kind of have to refine how you deal with the haters. And then maybe you get to a point where it's not about the haters. It's about, well, it's about love. Because I think opposite, love is the opposite of hate. And uh, I think even bigger than that, though, I think um, fear is what spawns hatred. And I think that people get afraid of how I'm having fun or I'm being awesome. And I think sometimes it, it uh, excites in people an inability in themselves to have fun or have enjoyment or not have the same kind of life I have. And I think that that fear that they can't be me. I think that's what it grows into hate. And then they hate me because they can't be, can't own, but they, they can't be something. And uh, Lumpy Dog says, thanks all. I got to go later. All right, Lumpy, you have a great uh, a great morning. And thanks for dropping by the stream. And I'm glad to see that you got some, uh, some love and some sub. But I realized today that uh, I can't stop being me just because a few people can't be me i guess that's the point and i guess when i get those haters it pushes me even harder to be who and what i am and people are like uh dan you're not always the bright light and uh i was having a conversation with somebody the other day and i said you don't you don't understand my life and i looked at him right in the eye and i just says sometimes my life well, we were talking about how I'd made a gal cry, you know, and I didn't I didn't make her cry. It was a simple conversation. And I talked about how one had treated uh, their parents and she'd made mention that she'd treated her parents horribly uh, right before her her uh, father had died. And uh, she started crying at this uh, dinner table that we were at and we're out at Denny's and uh, I had to stop talking and, you know, put my arm around this gal and comfort her. And then my friend got mad. He goes, Dan, it was unfair of you to make that girl cry. And I go, I wasn't talking to her. I was talking to somebody else about their father's going to die. And it brought up feelings in her. And somebody says, I wish you'd handled it better. And I, and I says, you don't understand. I says, I just show up like a flashlight. And I says, because I am light, I illuminate the darkness in the shadows of people's lives and then they see who and what they are and then they can't stand who and what they are so ultimately they have to change that's not my problem i said if a person has pain in them that they've not dealt with am i the jerk because i come along with a flashlight and i show you that your pain is there and then you know i can turn around and see that it's there and then i can ask you questions of hey have you dealt with that or have you changed your ways have you done something different and people go dan who gave you a right to to have the flashlight and i go if you call me your friend then i've got a flashlight into your life you know i don't know if any of this makes sense to any people or you know maybe half of you have gone to sleep um i know that the biggies is still watching because i highlighted his screen but um 
ultimately what I look at in all this stuff is I can't not be a light in people's life because the flip side would be to, to stay dark and to not illuminate the problems in the lives of the friends allow around me. And then uh, my friends around me just stay dark. That's not good. No, I want people to have a smile on their face. And if they've got some undealt with crap from yesterday or a year ago, they why not talk it out with me and I'll give them an idea on how to how to get over that. And uh, you know, once again, my friend said, Dan, that's not your right. And and I go, in the end, if my friend is in pain and I am compassionate to their feelings, then I will walk into their life because I am a friend and I do care. And I'll I'll use my flashlight of compassion. And uh, yeah, I says maybe it doesn't sound like a flashlight of compassion. Maybe it sounds like a club, you know, that I'm beating you with. But I I get to one thing, and the one thing that I really sit on is I can't make a happy person cry. <laughs> They're too happy. But I can make a sad person with undealt with crap in their life upset and possibly cry. But it's not me that put the pain there. It's just me that's illuminated the pain with my light. And then I think ultimately in the end that gives that person a chance to grow away from that pain. And ultimately I look at pain in people's hearts and pain in people's mind and like the pain in Gene's life as a distance from ease. And I don't like to see people in disease or suffering from their disease, even if it's themselves. So I don't know. She kind of said, like, you know, uh, you're a jerk. And I go, well, I, I guess I am. I mean, I don't really want to come into my friend's life and take their inventories and say, you suck. But obviously, you know, if somebody's focusing on an issue that's been undealt with for like, you know, four years, well, I, I think it's time to get it dealt with. And uh, yeah, I've had a few people to get very grateful. They, they haven't liked to get needled. You know, I call that needling and I say, what was going on with the situation or what's going on with that? And I guess in the end, I realized a lot of my friends, you know, they don't push their friends to have these conversations and they don't get intimate and they don't they don't care or they don't get to have the same connection. But I think when you come into somebody's life and you lift a burden that they've been carrying, um, it makes them a better friend and it makes them more connected with with you. And what it looks like for me is when I'm like, hey, you know, the, my truck broke down a while back and one of my friends like, you know, picked me up, drove me home and we swung into his house. And he says, hey, Dan, I'm, I'm stealing my brother's car for like a month, for like a week. And uh, you can just use my Honda. And I'm like, I can't just take your car. And he's like, you got insurance, right? And you used to drive a taxi. So you're probably a way better driver than I am. So. Just, you know, don't return it empty. I just drove off in a Honda and was like, somebody just gave me their car? That's crazy. But, you know, I, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, you know, I talked to that same guy today. And, uh, you know, I returned his car and put some gas in it. And we took a walk on the waterfront and we talked about life. And he just said, Dan, I've had some difficult things to deal with. And he says, and it makes it really grateful that uh, when I got some difficult things uh, and it really kind of starts to bug me out that I can, you know, chit chat with you. And he says, you always want to do something stupid, man, like go fly a kite. And he goes, but that's the answer, man. He says, I just, I, he doesn't fly kites, but he watches me fly kites. And he says, I mean, I start watching you fly the kite and you start getting all crazy with that thing and making it dance in the air. I don't just fly a kite. I mean, I put my kite on the back and do circles and loops and i got like a 50 foot you know super tube tail i'll chase kids around uh, people go you can't be that crazy with your kite dan and i go well i fly at chambers bay which is the site of the 2016 u.s open and uh yeah typically there's a bunch of people down there because you know it's the site of the u.s open but hey, i'll get to the point at least uh, half of the time when I'm flying my kite, people are taking video and that's what blows me away. Cause I'm just, I'm just out there flying my kite around and, and people were like, zoo, 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 you know, I can watch them and they're like, you know, and then they'll do the playback 
And you can tell they're watching a video because they're just holding the phone. You know, they're not going to stare at a picture for 25 seconds. I'm flying my kite and I'm like, oh, they're still, they're still, they totally videoed this stuff. I mean, let me do some more tricks. Two, two line kite. So, yeah. I like land it on the ground, park it, walk away, change my music, walk up to my kite, pop, boom. And it's like 100 feet in the air. Take, it actually takes about four or five seconds for it to get 100 feet in the air. But, yeah, when you fly a, a high-grade uh, super stunt kite, anything is possible. But the bottom line is uh, how to stay happy. Go fly a kite. Stare at your fish. Talk to some friends, some people that really care about you. And uh, that's what I get out of this fish fam. I get some people that really care about fish, and they see that I really care about fish. And then they're like, dude, we want to really care about you. Here's some love, Dan. And I'm like, holy, that is crazy. You know, most of the time it takes me like a month or two to build some of the same relationships that have been built on the fish fam in weeks. Crazy. I guess I'm not that, you know. Well, I mean, if you live in Tacoma, I just, I, just, I don't know about you, you know. People are like, aren't you from Tacoma, Dan? I'm like, no, I'm from Alaska. A little crazier, crazier up there. Our attitude is like, hey, leave me alone. But if you really need help, yes, I am your neighbor. But I'll probably answer the door with a 12 gauge. Uh, yeah. Alaskans don't want to be bothered. But the bottom line is if you got a problem, uh, they're the friendliest people on the planet. You know, They're like, hey, we'll give you a hand. But we'd rather be left alone. But if we need the hand, boy, do we want you to come over and be our neighbor. But don't bug us for a week or two, you know. Alaskans are like that. Very, very loving in uh, limited doses. So, anyway, people in Washington can't touch some of the people in Alaska. But when you live on an island, you learn to be nice. And you learn to be happy. Otherwise, you live in your house, you know. So, anyway, hopefully I made some sense. Maybe I encouraged some people. Maybe some people went to sleep listening to what I had to say. Oh, well, I guess in the end, I'm really grateful that I got insurance and uh, yeah, kind of wrecked my truck today. And in the scheme of things, I'm just maybe I should be more bothered, but I'm just not, you know, maybe my insurance going to go up. But yeah, I guess I'm bothered that she didn't have insurance, but I'm like, at least I did. So, uh, anyway, let's see who uh, is causing ruckus in my chat now. Dan is the Wizard of Oz, Washington, too. Biggies has multi tank syndrome, uh, need more tanks. Bjorn, I am here. Feast Axe is high all. Aquarium Cops is high V. No, in the bedroom, pimp drive crazy. Try with little tank it out in the living room now. Man, I had a hard time reading that. I don't know if I need to go to sleep or get more coffee. Kind of hard to say. I don't want no tanks in my bedroom. The pumps are driving me crazy. I you know them pumps make so much noise. <sighs> Forgot my roller down in the lobby last night. Came back from the walk, came right up to the apartment, let it right there. Oh, no, did let my roller downstairs in the lobby last night. <sighs> Who all her? Oh, here. Hi, Dan, the beer hunter. I am always, yeah. Do they have beer burgers with cheese? No, I haven't had to gotten to have a beer burger. I don't know if that would stay together. Aquarium Cops says, hi, Chris. Beer, we drink beer. Am I a beer hunter or a bear hunter? Man. I know when I lived on Kodiak, I had one of the biggest guns in the land. I don't miss that thing. It was like seven pounds of awesomeness. 
dude, I'd shoot that thing three times and it hurt. I was like, oh, I don't want to fire this again. Yeah, when you fire big um, guns big enough to hurt you, you're, yeah. well, half of that, well, I shouldn't say half of that, but yeah, 90% of that was the load I was firing, some super hydroshock, you know, hit with like three tons of force, knock a bear off his hind quarter because I didn't want to get eaten. But yeah, yeah I, I had to change my loads. You guys want to see a big gun? Go look up a 454 Kazool. Uh, and don't don't fire hydroshocks because they they will they they blow you apart. Well, I, black and blue was you, Dan. I'll tell you what, my my friend got amazed because I got good at you know firing that thing and f using the kick, and you just get strong and used to it. Uh, my friends took me to a firing range and they stuck a 45 in my hand. It wasn't a 45 mag, but still a 45. And uh, I just pulled that thing out sideways like that. You know, my friends are like, Dan, off the table. And I'm like, bam, 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 bam. And they're like, that's gangsta. I'm like, no, nah, it's Alaskan. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Good with a gun. But that's the bottom line. And, you know, 45, I'm sure, yeah. Probably uh, Bjorn can uh, can fire uh, a gun one-handed. But, yeah, the 45, blap, 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 blap. I shouldn't say the training I used to go through. <laughs> the cop probably knows it. Two to the body, one to the head. But, yeah, I shouldn't talk like that. Because that's, I don't know, that's life. I used to have a lot of fun. You got a big letter from YouTube. What? Talking about two to the body and one to the head. Well, no, that's that's how you train with a gun. That's when you go down to a firing range. That's how you train. All right, then you go and get a letter. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, anyway, bottom line, firing range. Yeah, that's what you got to train on the silhouette target. Seven people watching now, so now I'm going to have to repeat back from the very beginning all of the awesomeness that I was saying from seven minutes ago. You guys want to hear it all again? Oh, no. Let me mute. Does that mean Biggie's wants to hear it all over again? I'm just kidding. Anyway, let's read who we got in the chat real quick. We got the V Stag. Uh, we got the Aquarium Cop. Uh, we got the Chris, which is pretty cool from the Belgian, talking about the beers. Uh, I think Gene is or was here. Um, Lumpy Dog swung through for a moment. Paramath uh, came through for a wee bit. Um, got a little scratch on my shoulder. All right, taken care of. Anyway, if you're just joining me, um, yeah, the name of the stream is How to Stay Happy, and I think you'd be curious to talk to people in the fish fam about how they uh, they stay happy. Um, for me, look around my room. I just raise a lot of fish uh, and try to keep a lot of awesome people in my life. That's how I, uh, I stay happy. Anyway, let me go ahead, and uh, since I got six people uh, watching, I'm going to drop the link for the hangouts because I don't know if anybody wants to drop in. I wonder if Gene is still here or if he, if he, uh, if he took off, he normally likes to jump in on my hangouts. He cams up and it's pretty fun. Always nice to have the biggies, uh, in the house having fun. And, uh, yeah. Uh, we need to see if Chris decides to join us or, uh, the Bjorn. Anyway, bottom line, if you guys got some two super awesome tricks on uh, how to stay happy, uh, let me know. I'm always uh, adding uh, to my collection of uh, ideas and ways. Um, lately, I've been really exceptionally happy. I'll show you this fish that's really exciting me in my tank. I know it's only a guppy, you guys, but I get happy about guppies. Let me, uh, let me go to this... Uh, other screen so I know what I'm looking at. All right, there I am. All right, so let's see where if I can find this fish. 
Dun, 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 dun. All right. There is the fish. You see that nice? Come on, zoom in. Look at that color. Iridescent. Got the super red tail. Got the super red dorsal fin. Got some nice blue iridescent on the... And he's a pretty fast swimmer. Uh, it looks like his tail is torn. But what's awesome about that is that's... I don't know. See how that looks torn? But it looks like flames. And that's kind of how a campfire looks. Awesome. So, And he's got the yellow in there. To me, it's just like a little campfire uh, in his tail. And, uh, you know, he's got that nice black, and then he raises his dorsal up, and that looks like a little flame pattern. So I don't know, you guys. Uh, I, I think I truly got um, fire tail uh, guppies, and uh, I think I just want to say I got fire guppies now. See, that's a, that's a female right there. No, that's another male. That's another male with a nice red tail. But yeah, I just go, dude, I wanted fire tail guppies and uh, started breeding them. And bam, you know, nice black iridescent. That's a really beautiful color because it goes from the silver uh, to the gray. See that right there? That's a soft tone. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of that. That's snake skin. It's got that snake skin. But it's got that one's got more of a delta tail than the paddle tails. But yeah, that that's one fish that just... I am. I'm just excited. So my camera can't zoom in. Um, yeah, but you see, I got some uh, some snakeskin pure. There's a pure yellow snakeskin, and uh, I like to breed into that to keep that yellow. That'll turn to orange. That'll you know get some red up in there. Um, but that that fish just has a beautiful. That actually might be panther skin. I've never heard of panther skin till a guy's uh, video the other day. Was talking about snake skin, which I think is that right there. But yeah, if anybody knows about guppies, you guys can let me know. I'll just let you look at my guppies. Hopefully, my camera focuses in pretty soon. But yeah, bottom line, I get real jazzed about them uh, fire tail, um, and that's a nice big uh, paddle tail snake skin. But yeah, I should probably learn more about my guppies and. Uh, yeah, campfire guppy. There you go. That's what I should call that guy. But yeah, I just feel really lucky because you know that's like, I don't know, at least a really nice like two or three really nice males to breed against those females you see swimming around. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely uh, definitely interested to see what what comes out of that breeding pool. Then I got this. Uh, let me just cruise over here. Look at this female. She's on the darker side. But she's about to drop. Hold on if I can zoom in again. Yeah, there we go. She's got a soft uh, iridescent in her tail. Um, it's kind of hard to see. But I'm hoping that she'll carry that iridescence. Uh, like if that male back there gets some red into that iridescent, I'll have an iridescent. Because um, I used to have iridescent iridescent rainbow tails that would flash a different rainbow of color out of the tail. Just kind of like a rainbow. So yeah, these guys are looking beautiful. Um, I got to show you, the whole, you know, this, uh, this tank used to have a bunch of angelfish in it. And I moved some angelfish out. Because that beautiful pearl scale right there was picking on him. And that is the tank boss. Knows what's up. Let's see you're hungry. Boom. They come right up to the finger. But that pearl scale. Let me see if, I'm, if I've got it on the right deal. Oh, man. Hang on. All right. Let me see if I get this right. Yeah. See that pearl scale? Just Bam. You don't really see the pearl scale. Well, there you go. See the shine. That's a beautiful fish. Incredibly beautiful, gentle pearl scale. So the double pearl scale. Uh, but yeah, I got a really nice shine for an angel fish. Um, but that fish chased. I had a. Uh, I had four fish in here. 
And I'm pretty sure that guy chased one of the angelfish out of the tank because I came home and I found an angelfish on the floor. Kind of sucks. But that's what happens when you only put that much water in your tank. So, yeah. Let me go show you these other pretty, pretty fish. Yeah, it does look really nice, man. I'm just digging it. How's you doing tonight, Gene? Well, it's today for me, but yeah, I'm good. Well, thumbs up. Uh, look at that. I'm so out of focus. But anyway, thanks for making <laughs> me stream today. I just want to say thumbs up. And uh, yeah, really great comment that you sent me four days ago. It only took me like four days to find it, you know, because I'm all that smart with YouTube. Yeah. Cobb had some comments that he'd put up and, and YouTube flagged him as a spammer. And we're like, we're going to hold all four of these comments for a review. Well, that was because like they were kind of simple. One just said hi. And one of them was like, uh, hope you're doing great. You know? Yeah. YouTube's awesome. But yeah, I had to go through and be like, hey, no, this one guy is not a scammer. But those other four, yeah, get rid of them. Some gal was like, I love you. I hit on her channel. I was like, what channel do you have? She's got zero videos. So uh, I was like, all right, you're, I'm going to report you as a scammer. There's nothing on your channel that says you're a fish person. Dog had some comments that he put up and, and YouTube flagged him as a spammer. And we're like, we're going to hold all four of these comments for a review. Well, that was because, like, they were kind of <laughs> YouTube's awesome. But, yeah, I had to come through and be like, hey, you know, this one guy is not a scammer. But those other four? Yeah, get rid of them. was like, I love you. And then on her channel, I was like, what's your All right, I'm going to highlight it. Oh, look at that. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Carlos. What give me back? Carlos is So no, but Gene, definitely good. Uh, good to see uh, Christoph jump in. Uh, good to see you chilling, Gene. Yeah. Uh, I'd highlight the Big E's. Look at that, Big East Fish Keeper Comedy Jams. I, you're going to become the fish comedian in no time flat there. <laughs> yeah. Better go check so, out this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carlos is in the house as well. Excellent. Yeah. I'm, see, that's what it bugs. I'm like, when I get on the Hangouts, I'm like, what's everybody doing? Now I got to go. Uh, now I want to go read chat real quick. Hold on. Let me go see if there's any awesomeness. Oh, yep. So DPK. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so we got a full crew now. Zero stress. Excellent. Nope, I was filming. Could it work videos? All right, that was Eugene. Cool, cool. Uh, Carlos is okay. Made it. Sorry, he's late. I got a message today that got me crying in joy. And everyone that message me on my post excellent excellent thank you cram cop for making the stream last night i needed that big time that was an awesome stream cop super awesome stream we only got to catch little bits and parts of it because i was at work and then i was helping people good stream um biggies is the bomb and chris yeah you guys are like fun together uh, Chris says some stuff in Spanish. That's pretty awesome. Now my chat went multilingual as well as being uh, around the, the world. This gets better by the moment. Carlos says everybody is spectacular. Uh, TPK says cool. What is that, Gene? Zero. Because zero stress today. No, the super cool flashy thing in your hand. Yeah, there you go. Carlos is like, that's awesome. Wait, there we go. 20. Now that's even better. Yeah, now I'm 20. 
No, I think that's a real good point you're making, though, Gene, is uh, have a, having a zero-stress day. I mean, it's Saturday, so, you know, it's supposed to be a no-stress day all the way around. I'm going to go click on uh, Christoph's tank. He's showing us the cuddle bone. I wanted to get some info about that and figure out if that cuddle bone uh, disintegrates because it's got a lot of calcium. Oh, dude, you know, Gene, if you do that, uh, Aquarium Cop is going to put on his Darth Vader silver mask. And then, uh, yeah, he's got to get a voice synthesizer, I think, or a voice <laughs> scrambler. So that when we're talking on fish chat, he can put on his silver head and then he can be all, Luke, I am your father and it is time to feed your guppies. <laughs> it is time to breed your angel fish. And then, you know, he could really be like awesome cop and he could get on and be like, it is time for everybody to do a water change. Don't make me use my lightsaber. I will. <laughs> I will use my lightsaber. Do a water change. But he could have it in the total, like, Darth Vader voice. I'm just saying. That would be awesome, right? Yeah. I think we should buy a cop of voice scrambler. <laughs> I'm just saying. Then, you know. Although the other side of that equation is we'd probably have to listen to him say weird things all night long. And he might become a talk a lot. I do think he would host more streams, though, if he had a voice scrambler. And if if Cop hosted more streams, we'd be able to have more fun. See, that's the basis of this stream. Well, how to stay happy. I think to stay happy, you have to have fun. And half the time, that's just me picking on my friends. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I hope everybody is doing awesome tonight. I'm going to go bounce into chat. See, Aquarium Cop, he even wrote the, the skull in chat. <laughs> he knows what's up. Gene, is it your birthday today? No. Was it your birthday no, it yesterday? Was. No, it was a month ago. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'm just keeping the 20 that my uh, sister gave me when uh, like last year. Um, because yeah, it, it was pretty cool. And then in my videos, when I'm like, I have zero crap to give about haters, I use the zero, you know. Or when I say, oh, zero stress, or anyway, or things like that. So the zero comes handy sometimes. No, I think that's cool. I definitely think that's cool. I wish I could live a life with zero stress, but I seem to find myself with interesting people that have a lot of stress, and then they want to share their stress <laughs> with me, so then they don't have as much stress, but then I get stress listening to their stress. But I remind the world that's why I got fish and crazy cool fish fam people to chit-chat with about the craziness of the life I live in uh, T-Town, Tacoma, because there's crazy people in this this place. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I want. I wonder how many lurkers we have lurking. At least one. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> Buenos dias, Carlos. Isn't Buenos that Spanish? Dias, amigo. Oh, and they says Come happy birthday, that. Gene. <laughs> It was a month ago. <laughs> so, Gene, can you tell me what the most important birthday you're going to have is? Um, uh, well, you know, <laughs> every birthday is important. Wait, can you drink in Canada where you're at when you're like 16? Uh, 18, actually. 18, all right. So you're already a hammered mess. Oh yeah, now now I can drink everywhere. You're like ding. Yeah, I'm 21, so yeah. I'm legal oh, everywhere. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Just don't get hammered in the states. I'll throw you back to Canada. <laughs> yeah, no, because our beer is stronger than yours. So 
I think your your beard is like water. <laughs> well, you know, we're Americans, so we we limit our alcohol consumption. I don't think they're allowed to sell beers in Washington above six oh. I know Texas, they got something called Star Beer, and it's like 5.5 alcohol, and it just messes you up. Lone Star Beer. Anyway, yeah, I don't know if we can talk about that. Cause <laughs> Puerto, oh, Rico, yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico is 16. Man, I want to go there. Not. <laughs> I shouldn't make bad jokes about Puerto Rico, but hopefully they get the power on soon. I will have to send him some chocolates and cheese. I don't know. I'm thinking I just send him a 12 pack of America's finest water beer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm awesome. Deal with it. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So cool. Gotta wear shades. <laughs> uh, Car Carlos made a really good point. It says stress equal stress divided with awesomeness and it equal experience. Yeah, you know, I think that's true, Carlos. I think for me, I've gotten to experience a lot of really weird and I don't know, crazy stuff. And then people go through their experiences and they're like, I've never experienced this. And I'm like, well, I kind of have. Let's talk about it. And then people talk about the strangest things with me. And then, uh, yeah, I get to know things about people that I didn't want to know. And I don't like stressing. That's a pretty cool little deal. Mm. I'm getting distracted by uh, Gene's awesomeness. <laughs> I'm just showing the comparison between my hand when I was like five versus my hand now. Dang. Yeah, that, that's my... And uh, in um, how you say it in the in uh, in wax actually blue wax and yeah. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I, I got him big. <laughs> yeah, man, it looks like a Ewok Ewok hand. Yeah, I think that's the Ewok hand. All right, let me find something else that is interesting in my room. Oh. That's Actually, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have like Gene show and tell. I got this. Here, let me show you my my. Uh, I have to click on my screen now because I don't think anybody has um this kind of awesomeness in their room. It's a scorpion, like made with kind of blades and and stuff. <laughs> That's like a deadly weapon. There's like nine. There's like nine knives right there. Oh yeah, wait. There is like. Eight and just for the legs, then there is like three for the tail, then there is the claws, and then there is the mouthpiece where you can. Yeah, so if someone enter in my room, obviously I don't have guns, but it can whoosh, and then check who the crap out of it. Yeah, and then, and then check just, it. just hit him with the scorpion. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like. <laughs> so when I, when I like to be ridiculously awesome. And people ask me if I got needle nose pliers. I just whip out my needle nose pliers, you know. And people go, that's crazy. And I go, yeah, they're real big. And the best thing about these is when I go shark fishing, I can stay like six inches away from the shark's mouth and still get my hooks back. And then when you fish for salmon up in Alaska, you need pliers this big just to get the hook out of their mouth. And, uh, you know, I hate to tell people, but... Whoosh! And I had to decorate my pliers, um, basically, so I know they're mine, you know, because otherwise people try to take off with them. So I had to add my little, this is my little red bar. And somewhere on here, there's glitter, I think. Well, they might have wore off, but I like to put glitter on all my tools. Uh, ladies, fingernail polish, I think, is the strongest stuff on the planet. And so I think if I add, like, layers of that to my tools, it... One, it rust proofs them. Two, it makes them look beautiful. And three, it makes them stronger. Because women's nail polish, it's like, it's strong. I mean, look what ladies can do with their nails. So I like to be just as awesome as creative with my tools. So crazy stuff in Dan's room. Oh, how about my other craziness? That's my little torch. People like to do bad things with these things. 
but I'm a fireman, so look at that. My beard's on fire. Wait, where's Matt? Yeah. But yeah, that's my micro torch. Have it turned down. But I like to light my cigarettes, you know, in the wind. Oh, I blew it out. Man, normally this thing's windproof. Maybe I got to turn the flame up. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I can be a pirate. Man, I thought I had my other torch in my room. Well, it's in the closet in the hallway. I should not be a bad influence because Gene's here. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Who's Gene? I don't know Gene. Holy moles. <laughs> yeah, that's from Italy, actually. Hold, let's see. Uh, I'm see now. I gotta go back and chat and figure out what I. Okay, so Carlos says, "Ah, uh, here I am, rocky like a hurricane." But bam, lol, Ewok baby, Jane. I think that was a cop commenting on your hand. I can't, can't stop laughing. We Belgians, okay, beer. We Belgians, King, not Char. I can't read that. Sorry, bro. Is that scrap? Is that metal scrap? Yay, fish keepers up close and personal. Love it. Good good times. Oh, chocolate and cheese. Mm. It can open beer bottles. Yeah, that's like one of the greatest things about that pliers. It does a whole lot of cool stuff. I got a cool question for everybody here. What was your favorite thing to do when you were in your teens? Well, mine was like chase ladies around and ride my mountain bike. And, um, yeah, it caused as much trouble as I could. I didn't get to get in all that much trouble. Yeah. Carlos says, what was your memorable moment in life for each one of you? Chris says, smoking and thinking I'm, I'm big one and getting plans to get my... Man, Chris, that's bad. We might even have to delete that comment. That's horrible. <laughs> me was Chuck E. Cheese and fishing with my dad on Navy's Navy ship port. Yeah, that's I gotta say that's some good times. When I um when I was a kid, we used to go down to this PG and E uh, power plant and we would fish for uh, catfish because the power plant would bring in uh, water to cool the power plant down and shoot it right back out into the delta. And all these catfish in the winter would come into the water because it was two degrees warmer coming out of that power plant. Well, all the bait fish would go up in there too. But yeah, we'd fish for freaking catfish like three in the morning and have like the greatest time. It was crazy. I mean, I miss those times. I guess I miss having the time to go fishing because, you know, time, yeah, it's amazing. But yeah, fishing with my dad, probably one of my favorite uh, deals. I'm a hardcore, hardcore fisherman, uh, Carlos. The the fishing guys, like, they come ask me how to tie all their knots and, and yeah. So here's the deal. I go fish this, this one uh, pier and there's like 80 people on the pier or like maybe even 120, a lot of people. And I walk down, I get my... Uh, my, well, I got my commercial my commercial gear on, you know. Well, not my rain gear. But, yeah, I'll walk on the da dock, and they're just like, oh, this one guy, he, he says it. It's so funny. He's like, oh, professional is here. And he's not a Chinese guy, but he just he's a white guy that has this really bad Chinese impression. Oh, man, I go fishing. I instantly make friends with half of the dang pier. Don't matter what race they are, as long as you're there to catch a fish or my buddy. You can use my net. Yeah, I make a ton of friends. Yeah. Carlos says, I have 13 fishing poles and crab gear and shrimping gear. I love it. I don't have no shrimping, shrimping gear. Aquarium Cop says, quarter pipe ramps, flatland freestyle tricks. I had BMX bike too with Coca-Cola decals and paint my mom won it 
my first time with Brazilian Carlos, man. Freestyle my Haro BMX. I don't even think I've heard about the Haro BMX for probably 20 years. I remember Nash skateboards was the best in the Tony Hawk skateboards. Sorry, guys, but I was raised out of home in internet. I sleep at school from Sunday night to Thursday night with other dudes. Well, that makes sense. Crazy schooling. I was trying to think about the youth hostels. I don't think we have youth hostels in, in America. Yeah, we just don't. We just don't. LOL, frat party, Chris. Yeah, you guys, I've, I've gone to quite a few frat parties and, and uh, crazy fun times. I used to do the in college. I used to do the the you know the keg stands, and uh, I was pretty. Uh, I don't know. I was pretty strong in college. I didn't have a problem grabbing a keg and just walking it upstairs. So uh, I'll tell you this really bad trick. Um, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get some cup of coffee and I'll tell you this bad trick when I get back. Sorry, Wally is not here. Who's in charge of the stream? Uh, actually, Chris, uh, can you talk to me more about the um, the goldfish thing, the temperature thing? Um, because yeah, I, I kind of did a video yesterday actually talking about that subject. Um, but yeah, you you recommend me to uh, hibernate goldfish uh can can you kind of uh, tell us a bit more about that um yeah yes yeah, sure uh, Jean, um, i come back i just make some tea and uh, i'll be yours all right so um, here's the bad the bad story, right? So in college, I used to live in a like a, I used to live in a dorm, and I used to have climbing gear. And uh, my buddies, we go to this other dorm, and it was like six stories tall. And what we do is we yeah. By the way, it's a good idea to to slow the temperature here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, our Jean. Uh, a goldfish can live actually 20, 25 years. Yeah. That's good. You better slowing down the metabolism. But if you, I mean, the, the Daniels can afford it. I don't know about barbs, but uh, 90, 80 degrees will be the limit for cold water or for Daniels or other uh, fish. Uh, be available to, yeah. to stay in, uh, in cold water because I did some experience at, uh, like uh, I will explain an uh, issue also when I move on when I move the fry into the the 12 gallon tank yeah. I was so stupid that I, I didn't plug well the, the eater oh. right and yeah. uh, I, I, I felt damn that this water is so cold and yeah of course uh, I didn't plug the Recently, so yeah, they, they spent like uh, 
two days before I realized that uh, the the heat resonant plug and they, they did it. They did it. Uh, I lost maybe I don't know two three fries, but um, and they all did it. Yeah. Um, I try also to 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 add some some fellows with my two goldfish because remember I had uh, also two goldfish. Yeah. Uh, they, they in a in a store uh, restaurant uh, fish uh, when they, they mean fish to for consumption for for food, but they are in a great tank and uh, they they're doing well. But uh, I I give them some ancestors. One uh, of my baby curries, little ones, curry, panda curries, and uh, yeah, th this guy didn't heat at winter. My curries panda unfortunately passed away, and also the ancestors. But uh, the goldfish they do great, but they don't heat that much. Like uh, 14, yeah. 15, uh, 15 degrees. A bit of it. It's that it will slow down. You, you give them a break, like from one month to three months. Yeah. Um, that will be really benefit for them because they like to to have a break in their life. You know, they, if they feed them all, it's it's like uh, against uh, French um, the, les oies pour le foie gras. They, they always feed, you know, you can, you, I mean, you can feed also a pig every time, he will eat, he will eat, and then, yeah, you, you kill it to eat yeah. it. So a fish is the same, you can, you can feed him all, all day if you, if you like. Yeah. Of course, but especially we fry also. So it's, it's on you, it's not the, it's not the guilty of the fish, it's, it's the feed uh, guilty. Yeah. Like so I said, you're saying you, you have to yes. adapt on the fish and, yeah, for, in short words, the, if you slow down a bit the, the metabolism, you they, they will have a longer life. Whatever. That's, so yeah, that's you're my point. suggesting me to uh, to put the heater out of the aquarium for like uh, one to three months. No, no, because you you no no, no I didn't say that uh, because you have to take care. I don't know or you you live at winter. I mean, yeah, Canada well, is really cold yeah. land, so I, I can't. I can understand if you eat a bit, you eat a little bit your room. At night you don't heat. I don't know. No, it's the uh, uh, opposite. Uh, actually. A, a different a balance, uh, a strong string between night and day, and that's not good. To keep yeah. a minimum like eighteen that you can afford, you have, you find. I mean, I'm speaking in Celsius, but you have to find a compromise for you and the fish. But anyway, I recommend uh, Hertley to give them a break like from one month to three months. And that's one of the reasons, you know, that they don't mix everything in the same time. I don't, I don't guilt you, it's, it's nice to see goldfish interact, fit for them curiosity, they, they're not, I mean, I can understand you, you, you like some variety, but I, I recommend you to, to add some fish, they, they can support fresh water, and all the fish we, will, Enjoy uh, a break if they can afford it. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, but, uh, that, 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 that means uh, uh, um, subtropical. Uh, yeah, subtropical fish. So Daniel's um, my curries uh, like a real, that can uh, uh, support that. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, Daniel is not the tropic temperature. But, uh, sorry, no, but um, fish, Daniel. I mean, it's not a cold water but it's between the two yeah so that, that's, uh, that's 21 that's uh, degrees celsius and keeping it uh, between like the two it's like i call that fresh water a discus is different it, it lives at 30 degrees that's a tropical fish yeah yeah amazonia from south america fish but uh daniels maybe perhaps barbs they, they fish from fresher water the, yeah, that's why I keep the water fresher as well. I, I keep it uh, subtropical, and uh, subtropical is really the middle between tropical and cold water. And uh, subtropical, yeah, the, uh, it's, it's like kind of brackish water, man. Brackish water is not salt water. It's not soft water. It's between the two. 
commerce, you know, they prefer to have simple distinction and or, or, or less categories or less different categories for the commerce, or better it will run, you know. But yeah, if you if you go more in the hobby, you have to to more more and more distinctions. Yeah, but yeah, I, I keep the temperature at like um, 72 Fahrenheit. I think it's uh, well. I know it's 22 uh, Celsius, uh, and I even reduce it to like um, well a few degrees during uh, winter. Um, yeah. But yeah, I really keep it in the low 70. Yeah. Low 70. I guess uh, 72 is 21. Already fresh. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I keep it for fresh water. It's not cold water. It's not uh, tropical water. It's really in the between. If you like, you can, you can make three seasons. You know, uh, like we say, uh, a summer one, like you will you will uh, push up to uh, seventy six, and like that seventy eight max. Then you mostly of the year you stay on your seventy two. Uh, for the winter, let's say you you go at 65, 68, something like that. I, do, I, I just figure out with my small uh, thermometer, uh, right uh, translation. But in, in degrees Celsius, I mean 18 degrees, the, the goal for, for the winter. And you, you will see, you, you will money I'm speaking, but you, you will save food because they will not eat. Uh, so it's more difficult actually to to feed them when temperature is, is done. You have to, to feed them really half portion or uh, if they eat. Yeah, I kind of reduce the uh, amount of food I give them right now because the uh, water is actually colder than uh, during summer. Um, mm -hmm. So for my part, I think you better keep the the curries. They they will afford also. It depends the curries. You know, like uh, the curries uh, curry the rest any use is the strongest one. You can support that, and uh, maybe the curry panda period when the uh, at spring when the the snow smells from the mountain. It's cold. I mean, the water of the the curry pan. Uh, I did some research about it. But uh, yeah, that's a short time. And uh, uh, on myself, I would recommend to to keep them. You know, if you would like to to have a setup. And actually, yeah, if you maybe I, I've I've one. Huge as the the German blue ram, but uh, he still have pretty colors and he is a nice uh, peaceful cichlid. And he's still uh, small portions. Uh, I mean, big thanks to Rise the Fry. Uh, I think they I, 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 I never had kept them, but uh, uh, Bolivian rams are, are really cool and are. Recommend you small setup uh, South American that you you can have uh, a bit of diversity. Uh, don't mix too much. It's, it's always better to have a small. If you like tetras, okay, school of them. They they love to school. But uh, Bolivia, uh, yeah, Bolivia. Bolivia. Yeah. and that's in the an, another setup, right? Then another aquarium. So I just okay. like uh, one setup, uh, one setup with the Daniels and the goldfish. And yeah. Uh, oh, and then yeah. Another. Yeah. I think there is a big, uh, a big huge Daniel also. For your yeah, the Daniel. Daniel. The uh, yeah. So yeah, I will do a setup uh, South America, Amazonia, with catapa leaves, uh, fruits, 
try to have some acidic water and uh, that you can uh, run uh, at the same temperature almost all the year you know to to have two difference that, that will uh, encourage the if, if you like to the curries when they school and they feel comfortable is at decent uh, parameters a big water change like after a thunder yeah you have a storm going on you do a big water exchange you slow down one degree the, the temperature and normally they will spawn and yeah. also yeah the yeah. the don't forget the the feeding uh, okay but uh, you know it's like you eat uh, white uh, biscuit <laughs> like, like you I mean you feel with uh, something not that nutrition and I mean there is flakes and flakes that are, I mean are excellent from then but you know it's dry food it's it's not like like you eat a steak or something really nutrition like I mean uh, brine shrimp it's like a steak for the fish if you get me it's uh, all consumed it's thing they will not poop a lot with it but with flakes they will poop more more risk, you see I mean um, to to get the fish to 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 spawn of course get them some live food you like to 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 have small culture so yeah you, you should have some uh, Daphnia and it's, it's I think it's fun to to watch but uh, to to fall uh, some fun also and uh, that will kick off the and stimulate them to, to spawn also some live food some frozen food is also good you have to, to make them in the way in the mood to, to spawn by them like boosting them you know yeah So yeah, and the the male has has get longer longer fins. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 sexual difference is that the the males get uh, like uh, yeah um, a prolongation, uh, a small fin prolongation on his uh, on his fin uh, the. Surely the, the back fin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's. It's better for you to male beta fish, but be be careful of the the, the beta fish because if you it's, I think it's wonderful to to raise them. The tubs, small tubs, so. You have to separate them out after a certain age because they, they will kill each other. Um, a big infrastructure, even if it's small containers, uh, it's not that easy. But uh, and believe me, if you be so happy to, to see your, your fish uh, spawning for for you, and it's uh, it's not about profit or making money. It's it's just to to be happy. You, the, have, uh, I mean, I think with these rams, they will also protect the. They, they love to protect the. To you have some uh, fry and uh, yes, yeah, more cichlids. So it, it's a peaceful cichlids, and every it can go in a tank so if you you succeed to to, to breed them you, you will make them uh, easily uh, sell and rule exchange with, with the with the local fish store everybody can have I mostly
Hey, where is Dan actually? <laughs> it's his live stream and he's not here. Right now. Hey, he's doing some coffee. Oh. Uh, typical. <laughs> he needed something, he didn't sleep yet. You see, Jean, that's uh, my second and my third spawn. Uh, one month, some are going to two months, and they are so little. But that's 150 there. And for, from the first spawn, I, I still have 70. Sorry, what, what was it? Uh, was, I don't know if you can you can see, but the, in this tank there is 150. Uh, oh God, there is a lot. Of them. Yeah, that's crazy. And the, the the first, the, the fourth, and the fifth one, it's um, I think 300, uh, 60, 70 to to sell. And I and I put first try with the engines. I'm um, sorry, the discus. Yeah, yeah discus for me are angels. So it's <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the shop they took only eighteen yeah. for for frozen food. Well, it's nice you sold them. No, I moved them from tank. He sold no one. Yeah. Normally, I will I will have to to the fourth and the fifth spawn as feed as food, but uh, hard to do it. Uh, but I will have a problem soon, you know. Yeah. How's that? Because I don't have room to. Well, if I, if I get off the guppies and the platys, the, the guppy tank, yeah, most of the fish uh, out of there, I could rise uh, some more geos, but I, I don't have. Uh, I have no room. Eh? I will be overstocked soon when they are growing out. Eh? Even the the sixty and uh, the I mean like the seventy. Yeah, the, the, the more, and that's by taking your 13 for, for myself and 18 for, for the shop, 
there's still uh, 16 of, 60 of them. Uh, yeah, that's that's no good. Yeah, they say 45, but uh, it, it's 40, 40 gallons netto. But with a naked uh, bottom. Huh? I just received some cyclops. Yeah, I cut off the filter for a moment. That's always good for when you, you feed small food. Filter for a while. I'm looking at an interesting video right now. Oh, I like rosy birds. So I'm looking at a video with goldbirds, uh, sorry, not goldbirds, rosebirds, uh, goldfish, and minnows. Uh, a bunch of minnows together. Uh, those uh, rosy birds are really interesting.
Look, it's Quasimodo right here. Look, it's Quasimodo right here. Hello, Quasi. How are you? Let me just check it. Let me just check it. Comments. Comments. You see, you know, the, the smaller one, they, they for my first spawn. Yeah. yeah. The, those guys are about uh, six, seven months. Well, on the long run, the 13, that, that will be too much. Yeah, and I, I recommend you if you keep curries and you do um, South American setup, do not use uh, the color gravel, but uh, some some round sand. Here is aqua soil. Round. Uh, yeah, I was thinking to to have some more plants. It's difficult because they they digging they digging and puking all the time. Yeah, so yeah. Anubias is cool because I can fix them again. It's it's not big matter if they shred. But sometimes they, they're taking off the plants by, by digging. But uh, yeah, for, for the for the barbs of, of your corridas fish, it's better to have a white sand, but I, I, not, I don't like white sand. Um, uh, Aquasol, I mean, uh, uh, bigger than, than sand and because yeah I think it's it's beneficial for the bacteria they can live easily in a, in a substrate aeration because sand it's, it's uh, too massive and too compact it's too it's poor in, in it's it, it got no and uh, it's really compact so you I don't think it's very good for the bacteria. Yeah. Right, I'm going to have to go. Um, but yeah, it was really uh, fun to, uh, to be a part of this. You can keep your gravel for, for the goldfish, and that's no problem. It's better to to use evenly white sand, it's okay, but I, I don't like it, it much. I say why. And uh, yeah, yeah aqua soil or, or something around like uh, I don't know what's going on there, Akadama or light substrate, like like the, I will say it in French, comme des petites b. That will that's that's the max for your curries. Yeah. Yeah, I like uh, echo, echo, yeah, echo, echo, echo. But yeah, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm rid of. of uh, I mean, because of the fish, also it uh, plants nippers, the geos, so it will reduce the choice of uh, of plants. But Java moss, Anubias, Musifelandra, all these those plants don't need. Put them in the substrate, but you're free to to fix them or to glue them uh, uh, on wood, on rocks. You you escape like you you like, and uh, it's really nice to have a piece of wood just with a uh, stick on it. 
and it's not difficult to do. It's CO2, you, it's simple of maintenance also, just a little bit light. If you can get uh, some LEDs, cheap LEDs light, that's also good. It reduces the, the power consumption. Then we we can hear you. You 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 mute your mic, man. I'm I'm twirling my bacteria condominium. That's what I call this. Or it's like the the high rise ghetto. What do they call those places in in the Bronx? This would be like the projects. Wait, I gotta get a few more of these. That's like the bacteria, like the bacteria. projects. You see, I got like, that's all kinds of places. I haven't figured out if I like the black or the white. They're both uh, coarse foam. I don't know if you can see that. That's, that's pretty coarse. And that's pretty coarse. I don't know what the pores per inch are, known as PPI. The more uh, pores per inch, uh, the finer the sponge. This might be like 30 pores per inch. But you have to have a place for your back. So this stuff is a fluval aqua clear. Three pack, eight dollars. I don't know why they would make such a small bio wheel. There's the top foam filter the top cartridge. Foam filter That's another one. Another one. Um, I got that biological that filter media. I just pour that like cereal. It's cereal. Oh, right over. Oh, oh, right over. oh well. Watch, this is what you do with these guys. See the, see the tank? Just drop some filter balls right in. Look, they're trying to eat them. So that's some bacteria going to go live in those uh, bacteria balls on the bottom of the tank. Oh, that's, i got to clean that tank. So hope everybody's having a great, happy, happy morning. Let me let me try to mute my mic and we'll see if you still hear the echo, you guys.
Yeah, you guys, I'm going to mess around with sound real quick and, and try to figure out uh, where that the echo is coming from. Yeah, see, now there's like a whistle. Well, do you guys still hear an echo now? Hey, did the sound get better, you guys? I wonder if it's just scratchy internet. I don't know. Hey, did the sound get better, you guys? I wonder if it's just scratchy internet. I don't know. All right, let me try again and see. Did it did it clear up? So I just muted myself. I wonder if that cleared it up. All right, let me try again and see. Did it, did it clear up? All right, is the echo gone, you guys? Does this does this? All right, that sounds clean again. So, yeah, I, I never can tell if uh, what's going on sometimes trying to get the sound to sound right. And, you know, sometimes it sounds good and sometimes it sounds weird. I'm going to mute myself. All right, well, back to the business of uh, being awesome with fish. Uh, if you're just joining uh, me, I'm Dan, happy fish guy. I decided to make this stream. Uh, this morning called um, how to stay happy and I think it's about uh, focusing on I don't know you find people in your life that got a smile hang out with them you find people that are always have a frown and are always whining about whatever I don't know I tell people sometimes it's time to just find better friends some people like to be moody some people like to be haters I don't know I myself I like to try to have a smile on my face so I got to be around smiling people I think I'm looking in my chat and I'm seeing a lot of, you know, really cool smiley people. So that makes me uh, smile. Like uh, we got Chris always throwing down the good info. We got White definitely bringing a smile. We got the biggies with the comedy. Well, we got, you know, the aquarium cop. We'll just say he's keeping the peace. We got Carlos uh, definitely making the bestest, bombest logos in the land with the fish. Super dig your logos, DPK. Super dig them. Uh, Big Easy's eating rice and beans, so I'm glad I live like, you know, 600 miles away. Uh, is that roller squeaking? Yeah, I never did figure out what the roller squeaking was, you guys. I think the clean, the stream, I don't know. I should probably check this, see if it sounds clean. Yeah, I guess I'm still crystal clear again. I never can figure it out. Sorry, I'm going to go back and chat. Uh, Carlos says alien transmissions, but I hear echo man. Yeah, I guess it, it got better. I'm trying to read chat. I should probably just keep reading it aloud. Cop can burn in the kitchen. He can hold back on us. All right. 
Still the alien sounds. Yes. Sounds good now, but I don't think the echo was you, Dan. I, I, you know, I never can figure it out. That's why I got to use these little headphones with the microphone here. And, uh, yeah. And then I have to earphone the sound in. I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I just don't think YouTube actually has a way to like properly chat with people without running headphones and a mic. Cause there's really no way you can run a speaker and a mic. People go, well, we watch it at concerts all the time. And I go, yeah, you do. And you want to know what you see? You see the artist like this, like screaming into the mic, you know, bam, right there. Because they take that mic and they tune that mic so down, so low that the guy's got to be like, right? And you notice that the speaker, you know, for the guitar, it's on the ground. It's like three feet away. But they still got a sound guy. I know I look like a fool, but that's how it is. That's always how it is. And they got a sound guy that's basically demodulating the mic so that, bam. And then once again, they take that signal coming off the mic. Now that it's been demodulated and uh, all the mic sensitivity has been taken down, he rams that sound into an amplifier and then reamplifies the sound of the singer that he wants. Bam. So the bottom line is, yeah, he pulls the trebles, pulls the bass, pulls all that and mixes it all up. And that's why you got a mixer. You look at a mixer, the guy's got like, what, 10 knobs just to up and down a frequency. That's the only way you can make a guy sound clean because the microphone just doesn't properly and is unable to pick up all the frequencies. Anyway, it's a weird mathematical thing. Uh, people go, Dan, you understand frequencies? I go, I used to be the radio man. So I understand frequencies. I understand cross frequencies. I understand quarter wave, half wave, eight, 18th wave, 20th wave, all these different wavelengths. People go, can you mathematically calculate a wavelength? And I go, well, I think everybody knows a CB radio, but nobody can tell you exactly how long that wavelength is. Well, based on the frequency, uh, it's 42 feet. That's channel 20. It's like 42 feet something inches. People go, that's crazy that you know that. And I go, I just automatically do from being a kid. But anyway, bottom line, you want to properly produce CB frequency 20, uh, you need an antenna that's uh, a half wave, 21 feet long. And uh, out of a half wave antenna um, and a few other mathematical oddities, antenna math is ridiculous. But anyway, the bottom line is, Feedback sucks. You guys quit staring at my bathroom. I know you guys are staring. Man, see, I can't even point. Acting a fool because I should be on the hangout screen. All right. Anyway, I should probably just get in the chat and quit <laughs> making a ruckus and smiling my tail off. Let's see who we got in chat. I'm probably just getting goofy because I had coffee. But I think bottom line for me, uh, this mic that I'm using right now is uh, I've uh, upped the sensitivity on it a little bit. So I think sometimes I come in a little loud. But the bonus of me coming in loud to your guys is that you guys can cut the volume down or you can quarter the volume down. Uh, the flip side of that is if I came in really soft and low, um, then you guys would up the volume and you would hear a lot of the background noise. So it's better that I boom into you and you guys go down way easier. So anyway, every time you amplify anything, you always lose a little bit in the amplification. Uh, if I send it to you over amplify, then you can always de well, we just call it demodulation of the signal. <clears throat> it's all you do when you turn the volume down. Anyway, I should probably get back to aquarium talk. But if I talk about frequencies, then I'll just start talking about the Kelvins of the lights I use and the nanometer frequencies that uh, the nanometers, that's what it is, 720 nanometers and around 410 nanometers. That's the wavelengths, uh, or if you will, the frequency of the light. People go, what's the visible light spectrum, Dan? And I go, well, that's anywhere between, uh, I don't know, some, some people, if you've got wide eyes, about 350 nanometers up to about 700 uh, nanometers, that's what uh, frequencies our eyes perceive. Um, just a lot higher frequency than the sound that our ears can hear. But light is a frequency. Sound or colors are definitely different frequencies. 
and sound is just a frequency. So it's all about how you control it. You can never be too bright. You put some sunglasses on, but if it's too dark, <laughs> that's why I don't like to go anywhere without a flashlight. Once again, more light, put some shades on, get a tan. Anyway, enough about that. Bottom line, if you're here, let's be happy. It's all about being a light in the darkness. I try to be a light. I try to carry a smile. And, uh, yeah, bottom line, if it's dark outside, I try to have a flashlight. Everybody's like, dude, they only got a flashlight. Bam! Power outage. We got it taken care of. Anyway, I better stop chatting about goofiness because I've had a few too many cups of coffee. I should probably go to sleep, but there's, like, you know, too many awesome people in my chat. Got uh, the cop is hanging. DPK is chilling. Jenna Tucker, killer, killer, awesomeness. Uh, let's try to see what I got to get caught up in chat. Graham Cop says I made pizza, fresh garlic, not fresh mushrooms. Feast egg showing the love to Jenna. That's awesome. People are getting happy that uh, Jenna's here. Sweet, sweet. Uh, Biggie's is rolling his roller. Carlos, thank you. <clears throat> I know what it was. Man, fill us in. It was Gremlins. That's good. Everybody's showing the love to the V-Stag and the Jenna. That's awesome, awesome. See, I write, no, he was gone to cook soon. Dan, I run a speaker and a mic. No headphones here. Well, White, I wonder if you if you get end up getting feedback. It's a real fine key. When I was running Wirecast, right now I'm just running Hangouts, but I used to run Wirecast, and I like that because I could uh, upperly modulate. I forget the... I could make my microphone more sensitive, or I could unmodulate it and make it less sensitive, and then I could balance out running speakers. But you still can't run the speakers super high. I mean, everybody knows you get that whine. Oh, well. Anyway, at least I don't have that here. All right, let's see. Uh, Genesis High to the Cop. Sweet, sweet. I just can't have the volume, to, or, or it would echo. Yeah, it's a great point, White. Loud. Hello, here in Snow White and the Seven Dwarf song in my head. Because I'd read the rest of that, but, you know, Biggie says we're not allowed to say strange things like that on the air. I'm laughing. Because his kid has gone to the kitchen, his OCD has been clean hole to kitchen for two hours. All right, Carlos says, uh, man, I was trying to, I was trying to read what Carlos wrote, and I just like made my screen all crazy. Uh, DPK says, I got an interesting question, Dan. Can sound frequency affect fish? Uh, that would be a yes. So shark sharks, very interesting. I don't know if you guys know this, but sharks have a lateral line. And uh, they it runs from the tip of their nose down to their tail. And they use that lateral line to detect the frequency of fish swimming in the water. And they also use it to detect electrical fields. But yeah, fish can definitely uh, feel uh, frequencies. The other thing about frequencies is because water and air, there's a difference. Uh, sound travels uh, eight times more effectively through water than it does sound because of the water molecules. And the uh, other thought of this is that whales sing, you know, like they say that's like the smartest thing uh, near us is the whales in the oceans and they sing very complex sounds that can carry for miles well not 10 miles but anyway bottom line whales can communicate across very large distances that we could never dream of but that's because they're underwater and i guess their songs are just a frequency some of the frequencies that whales sing are such a low frequency 
that we can't even hear them with our ears. Like if we were underwater next to the whale, our whale, our ears are just not that sensitive. Uh, next trick is the whale. That low, low frequency is what carries through the water for the distance, allowing whales to talk to each other over greater distances. So anyway, so um, yeah, frequency. Uh, try to pick on born today. No one gonna help me. Oh man, I don't know. If cop gets enough coffee in him, I will totally join Chase. I'm going to have to get disco lights, though, to help the cause out. Uh, I have wondered that, too, DPK. I heard sound effects plants. Um, well, I've heard that low frequencies help the uh, absorption of certain minerals and waters into plants because we know that, you know, basically a microwave is just uh, water being hit at a specific frequency that water that excites the water molecule. So anyway, the, I've... Uh, seen studies about sound being used very low in the soil to help the water uh, break water surface tension, uptake nutrient uptake, and a few other things. But I've never really heard enough where people are like, yeah, I mean, I don't know how you go out into a one acre field and like, you know, give sound or frequency to all the tomatoes or potatoes. Um, yeah, I was going to go off on a total tangent, but yeah, I probably won't tell you guys the music I play for my fish because I think it makes them happy. It's not like they start doing the, the deal or twerking or jerking or dancing, you know. Well, I shouldn't say that. I think that the, my guppies when I when I play the love music, I think they mash and bang. I, Yeah. I mean, I think if you guys are see that I got more guppies mashing and banging in my tank, I think that's the happy music I play. But I get to be happy too, so that's what matters. Alright. Um... In the jungle, the mighty jungle, in Dan's bathroom, the lion sings tonight. Man, I'm going to have to close my curtain, you guys. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Now I looked at the, you know, yeah, the 30-second delay. I'm like, I just shut that. And now on camera, I'm shutting my curtain, and everything looks chill. Dun, 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 dun. That's the good stuff. Feed this once in a while. Feed frozen uh, blood worms. Feed live brine shrimp. Keep the brine shrimp alive for 12 hours, and you can feed them spirulina powder. You can find that spirulina powder in the health food section of uh, most of your health food stores because it's a super healthy food, and your brine shrimp will love it. Um, and then what you get is you get spirulina or you get uh, brine shrimp. They're just spirulina gut loaded, I think is how you say that. But yeah, then they got active junk in the gut. And uh, yeah, brine shrimp are really uh, effective right when the egg yolk is there. That's what really makes your uh, your young fish fry grow, both the uh, angel fish and the guppy fry. So I got to keep this fishy stream a little bit on fish you know at least for five seconds at a time otherwise you all think i have like adhd and you're constantly distracted was that a squirrel just kidding you guys <laughs> was that a shiny thing oh man <laughs> anyway i should probably get back to this craziness dan said he can hear his fish pass wind at night I, I can only wonder if fish fart. I don't I don't know. I don't think their stomachs are set up to uh, for the anaerobic bacteria in there. I'm thinking, what could I do? If I start feeding my fish cabbage and they start flowing to the top, then I'll know my fish have gas. But I think if fish get gas, they start floating or sw swimming upside down. So I don't know about that. Aquarium cop, now he got me thinking. And uh, Carlos starts to sing the song. We try all day to pick on Bjorn all day with no help. <laughs> Man, I don't. Could a, would a fish comedian need help? And if a fish Canadian, I mean, a fish comedian, not a fish Canadian, but a fish comedian needed help, would I even know that he needed help? Man. Then I'd have to have some knowledge about the comedy and the fun. But just because I have a smile on my face doesn't mean I know how to be comedic, you know. And I'm definitely not the funny guy. I'm the happy guy. 
it's up to it's up to you uh the biggies to make us laugh you know all you really got to do biggies is just talk about weasels i don't know why weasels uh really make the cop happy but weasels weasels be weaseling around my fish tank i think i want to get a, a river weasel or a black-footed weasel but anyway i know the cop is laughing now don't pee your pants in your cop car because i think that's a misdemeanor or something like that isn't that the facing government property I don't think weasels are allowed in cop cars. Well, unless they're like, you know, what's the opposite of New York's finest? You probably do got some weasels in, in the in the York town that need to get, you know, put in the silver bracelets and have some fun behind the bars until they learn to quit their criminal ways. Little uh, social re-socialization, as they call it. All right. So uh, let me try to re read the rest of what's been written in the chat definitely fun to see uh white here good times got some new people uh carlos is singing the the forest song all right so i think that's the yeah i'm not even sure what song that is Big East says, hi, White, how are you today? I'm dead day, no fun. That's what every Saturday is supposed to be, I thought. Marianne Taylor says, LOL, what are some good sounds? Big East says, no, hello, bud, I'm all good here, thanks. Hope you're doing fine. And when you pee, don't flush, use a bit of bleach water. Let's save the world together. That's a good point, Chris. Let's start this party up in here. Biggies, what's your plan for comedy tonight? All right, let me bounce the screen around. I'll be I'll be back in a flash. All right, bouncing back in. Yeah, I gotta adjust my screens again. All right, I'm there. No, all right. I should show you guys my screen. You should do a screen share. You'd be like, "Yeah, hey, it's all goofy, dude. What are you doing?" Man, I just screwed it up again. Half asleep. As soon as I'm only half awake. But Chris made a good point. When you pee, you don't flush. Use a bit of bleach water i mean i was just thinking chris there's these guys out in africa and they just recycle their stuff into a cup and then you know re-drink it and i think that's the ultimate recycling but i also think that's the ultimate gross but you know they think it's a a religion and they get spiritual on it i don't know i guess if i drank enough of my own stuff i'd probably start seeing strange things too dan gone to get a barn door for the bathroom man well, I just I just don't let people use this little space, you know. I mean, it's a two bedroom pl- I mean a two bathroom place, so that's my personal um yeah. You know what's bad, you guys? I'm so tempted just to put like a 1 inch hole in my desk and then just run like 10 feet of 1 inch pipe right into the sink, rest it on the wall when I want to run it, you know, I just plug it in, have a 90 so it wants to run it down the drain. And then I can just go into each of these tanks. Oh, you know, uh, Chris was talking about going into business last night. And I got a few little things that I think would make the fish fam easy. One of them, it's called the weasel tail. Not kidding. Called the weasel tail. And what the weasel tail does is it helps you start a water change. That's why I call it the weasel tail. It's going to be the weasel tail water change Uh dealio but it helps you start the suction in the pipe so uh yeah that's one thing and then another thing is is you if you get a little hook right and you you uh, know how deep your tank is you can actually come into your tank 
uh, if the little hook is uh, set into your tank, depends on how deep, like this, of course, like if my arm is the, man, I can't describe it like that. Let me grab the tools. <clears throat> and of course, I got to go to the right screen so I know what I'm showing you guys. Jeez. All right. Powered up and going. So, bottom line uh, when I put this into the tank, of course, the big blue hose takes off. I got the little. Uh, valve right here so I can turn it on and off but anyway if I stick this in a tank it'll only suck so much water down so a lot of times what I do is I have a little block of wood and I put that up here that way there's only about an inch and a half so in some tanks uh, that inch and a half is like two gallons in other tanks it's like three but basically I just put this in uh, yeah, you guys can't see that, dang it. But like if I put this in this tank, if this, this end was in the tank and there's a block of wood, you see how it's only able to pick up, oh, I don't know, this like an inch of water. So in this tank, 10-gallon uh, tank, uh, 12 inches deep, got an inch of gravel. So that roughly means that uh, every inch is roughly a gallon. So if I put this on here right now, um, I can automatically know that I'm going to suck roughly uh, a gallon and a half, maybe two gallons. I won't suck over 20% though. Um, put that little filter on there, little strainer. I actually got another one. But anyway, I got to get this set up on there. Bottom line, I think it would be neat to sell these little systems. You could just go to a tank, bam, start the suction. Go to another tank. Bam, uh, have a second one of these. Start the suction, have a third one of these. So, I mean, in a weird way, all the parts that I'm talking about are already out there. They're already at Home Depot. They're already like little, well, Home Depot sells them for like, you know, a buck, but basically like one buck. Uh, you know, the pipe itself, a 10 foot stick is like six bucks. So, you need a little inch here and a little inch there and a little three inch here like talking six inches of pipe that gets cut some corners you know so you're talking like four bucks in parts but you assemble it all uh in the half inch uh three quarter inch and maybe even a smaller diameter boom people can the bottom line is if i make water changing that much easier for people to do using the water weasel using this little i don't know the u-hook uh water change system i know that people's fish are going to get more water changes and people's fish are going to be happier and then people that own fish are going to be happier. So in the end, I'm thinking about how to make people's fish happy. And I think that's why, um, yeah, I think that's why I get to call myself the happy fish guys because I'm trying to help people have happy fish. So who wants to go into business? Let's have a lot of fun and get a smile. All right, now I got to go back in the chat and read some funny stuff. Hopefully Biggie's has got a joke or two. My angel fish are splashing water on me. It's kind of nice. All right, here we go. I'm trying to figure out this. Uh... Blow my head off long ago. I know I'm way back in chat, you guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks, Jenna. Interesting about the whales. Yeah, it's, it's fun stuff to figure out. They actually had to amplify uh or uh take the lower frequency anyway it's a hard story but they were hearing these big spaces between the songs and they were like what is that and then they sped the sound up to a frequency that we could hear because they thought they you know were getting to the below the hearing range of the human so they said maybe there's something underneath that so speed it up boom we can hear it so anyway I try, just give a try, please, White. Question me after. Let's see, Dan gone. All right, so I already read that. Cool, cool. Could you use your fish tank water to make ammonia nitrate crystals for making explosives? Nitrate. 
Why, you know, that's a really interesting question. I will say that, um, uh, well, I'll have to look into it, but I was looking at, um, man, I can't remember exactly, but I was looking at bacteria, and I guess uh, a few places around the world used bacteria to pull uh, certain things out of the water, and then the bacteria would process it and reintroduce it into the water as a different uh, chemical. And so, like, Germany would raise certain batches of special coils. You know, everybody talks about those, um, what are they, super stack? Basically, you take three milk crates and you put the different uh, stuff in there. Well, Germany did it, but they did it with, like, 90-foot towers where they would pump the water up 90 feet and then the water would trickle down through a, basically a super bacteria home. And uh, they were able to process uh, certain stuff that way uh, for the war. And they still haven't fully released uh, what they were doing with the towers, but it's well known that they're bacteria towers. I should get, get you guys the link on it. But, yeah, so you raise the right bacteria. Um, I'm not sure if it was ammonia uh, nitrate, um, which is basically a fertilizer. Um, very interesting question. Uh, Carlos says, yay, yay, Tetra Flakes. Yeah, they're just a good all-around food for everybody, I think. Uh, you know, I guess if I'm wrong, somebody will teach me something different. I'm trying to get caught up in chat. It's whole, man, big smiles. Balls for shrimp, Carlos. Uh, Chris talking in Spanish again. Dig it. Totally dig it. It was a weasel. Big Issa uh, said it's hard to think for five seconds. Use Aug... Use oxygen peroxide 30 white to make. All right. Borom. I don't know. Women fish have them things. Have them thing like 28 days. Think, think about. Biggies, man. I'm like half asleep. Can't figure that one out. Here, Chris, I was just saying that you can use your tank water to make gunpowder. Man, I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, a cramp cop says, clap the hands, pass some gas, uh, and you got yourself a bomb right there. His OCD, you now uh, get your butt kicked that night. You can also use fish ammonia. Can be used for the cooling system man i'm gonna have to get all you know chemical industrial on you guys i just say it was a crime to throw water away use it in the garden for fish plants uh clean whatever yeah i haven't figured out a way to recycle my water into my uh um well my flush tank my toilet right but i think theoretically there probably is a way that one could pull water out of their tanks. And, you know, if it's crap water, let's let's get straight. It's already crap water. It's already full of fish poop. Might as well put it in your tank and use that to drain, uh, you know, your toilet. That way you get a double, you can double crap the water, you know. Two for the price of one is always better. And, you know, there's never a sale on water. That's the, the price of that's always going up. I don't think I've ever, you know. All right. I got to get back into the fish chat. Lack of coffee. Let's see. Uh, I read. You should be able to refine your tank water into ammonia nitrate, add charcoal and sulfur, and whoa, you have old good old gunpowder. Man, I'm going to have to, like, check that out. I read that somewhere, but I'm not sure the process of making fish ammonia into Freon. Sweet M80 in the making. I use my tank water to the water of the plants, and that's, that's a good deal. White. Carlos, weasel. Forget weasels. New York has huge rats. I see them when I live up there. They're bigger than cats. I... I'm pretty much a rat fan. Yes, Dan, in some cultures they drink the morning urine. It's uh, beneficial for health, but I never did. 
Also, the astronauts in space can filter their urine and drink it again. Yeah, I've heard that's what they do at the space station. Kind of creeps me out. Um, Genesis got to go. Have a great day. It was like 10 minutes ago. I feel good. I'll get caught up. Put me down for one weasel tail, Dan. That's what I'm talking about, cop. I'm going to have to design it. We're going to have to get into business. Weasel tail water change system. So just making, trying to make water change easier. Everybody's saying bye to Jenna, showing the love. That's cool. Which animal everyone don't like? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I just don't have time to go around and not like animals. Uh, but I do like the polar bears at the local zoo. I got to just say that now. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, that's fair. I have to think, Chris says. White mosquitoes. Chris says mosquitoes. Since being in Spain, LOL. My ferrets, I freak out when I see one on. It's one of my phobias. Yeah, they, they're they kind of creepy when you first, like, check them out. I had to get used to my friend's ferrets, but then they're like your pals, and then they try to climb up your pant legs, and you're like, whoa, dude, get this ferret out of my pants. My friend would joke. He's like, no, dude, you're just happy to see me. I'm like, dude, the ferret is like, no, he's just in my ankle, man. He laughs so hard. That guy was a ferret comedian. And even worse, he was a bird comedian. He used to have cockatiels all over the house. And uh, the cockatiels would fly. He had a kind of a big house. And the ferrets would run around on the ground. And if the birds landed on the ground, the ferrets would try to come get them. I think to play. They didn't realize they could eat them. Uh, let's see. Ferrets are cool. Uh, and the vampire flies is Chris. Uh, poop the mosquito. Man, you guys are typing all good weird stuff. Carlos. Let's see. Oh, pop the mosquito. All right. Man, maybe I'm talking weird stuff because I'm lack of coffee. Malaria does suck. I poop my pants when I see one white. Okay, so they scare the crap out of you. Yeah. A few of my fish friends have pet ferrets. Mosquito is responsible for millions of deaths. Yeah, that's a good point, Carlos. I mean, uh, Chris. Um that's why I used to raise mosquito fish. And uh, there's a certain type of fish, and you can get them and uh, raise them. And they basically breed. Well, they just basically eat mosquitoes. And the more mosquitoes they eat, the more they breed. But I haven't seen them for a while. I was hope, thinking to maybe get them as an aquarium fish. Because I remember they were in all kinds of little streams and lakes. Pretty awesome little fish. Be brave and any other way except ferrets i always feel like they're planning to attack me well they are they, dude ferrets are always planning on attack but they don't you know they don't they never my friends never bit me they always attack me with love and we're like what are you gonna feed me now yeah so they totally would attack crazy little ferrets he had three of them komodo varans from chris I like to be forrest gump run forest run Poison sea snails. DPK. All right. White sharks and orcas. Yeah, I don't know, Chris. Uh, lived up in Alaska, seen the orcas. Blew me away. Uh, DPK says, cool, Dan, that's cool. Tim's chicken. Well, it's only if it's a mean chicken. But it is a coaching chicken. So Tim does have a coaching chicken, which I, them, them suckers are big. And they got some spurs. Wait, can you try using fish poop in a pressurized tank and let it rot on the bottom methane gas for the fireplace? Well, I'll just throw this out there, DPK. Most of the um, uh, bacteria and all that stuff doesn't do well under pressure. Like, they're just not, yeah. DPK says, piss Gatorade. I've wanted... A bit on making methane gas also. 
watched. All right. My guppies and platies like to eat catapa leaves. Yeah. That's good to feed them catapa leaves. Cool. Why we should do the next live stream fish keeper survival skills. Back in the UK, they're using dog poop from parks to make methane gas, but they said that the predator cats from the zoos make more methane because of the higher uh, protein content. Um, I was just thinking, from, I wonder if that's because the cat's digestion system is not as advanced and awesome as the dog's digestive system. I mean, in the end, it's really what comes out the back end that matters. Uh, guppies are pretty efficient feeders per inch. Um, people are like, hey, you know, when you do the goldfish, like fish per gallon, uh, goldfish are like a half inch per gallon because they're such a messy fish because their digestive systems are just not able to digest. And that just makes them messy because they really do just throw a bunch of nutrients back out into the tank because they don't absorb it. So I guess that's just the scientific way to talk about it. All right. I love watching survival stuff. Cool white, happy fish guy. Uh, oh, Mark's uh, Arcs Aquarium. New. I don't think I've seen you before, so that's cool. Thumbs up. Always fun to see new people that find my stuff. My little live stream. Cool white. I think here in the U.S. we used to use cow manure to power the factories in the 60s. Um, yeah, cows produce more methane gas than anything, but that's because grass. Um, when it breaks down, there's a lot of bacteria that break down grass that do produce methane. Um, bottom line, cow's stomach's got a lot of bacteria. Uh, the cow warms up the bacteria so that it's extra active. Stuff is good to go. Mark's showing the love to everybody cool, but ain't hydrogen sulfide more unstable if I put it in a pressurized tank? Not sure about that. Always something new to learn. Man. Um, I was trying to think about what... Uh, but they found out higher protein content in the food here makes for a better fuel. Real quick, I don't know if you ever guys uh, got into composting your own dirt. Uh, I composted my own dirt once. Well, I've done it more than once, but I got did it good once. Anyway, take the compost, you know, a bunch of dirt, leaves, stuff. Go get alfalfa meal. Uh, I got my alfalfa meal was kitty litter. You know, 100% all natural kitty litter, nothing added. Uh, pure alfalfa meal is what it said on it. I had to go to the right feed store to get it. But anyway, I got that pure alfalfa. Alfalfa's got a high amount of protein in it. Added that in there. Uh, watered the snot out of my... Uh, not so that it was like you know wet but you could you could in the beginning you could reach into the pile and uh you could squeeze stuff and there uh, maybe a drop of water would come out but it was definitely not dry anyway i would water my compost every day because uh the stuff inside was heating it up so hot that it was drying it out and when the when it dries out, the bacteria basically die off because they need that moisture content to survive. And so as long as you're adding the water um, and you're forcing the moisture in there, the bacteria will get so active, they'll start your, to heat your compost pile up. And as woods and everything gets hotter, it breaks down faster. So a certain level of bacteria would come in at like, we'll just say, you know, uh, 85 to 100 degrees. Then they actually would cook themselves off. Um, but other bacteria present on the wood, it would start to, uh, well, start to multiply and give birth from 100 to 120. That allows your compost pile to creep up in temperature, uh, thus cooking that bacteria. Um, and then basically you, you get even higher into the th like the third stage. Uh, another bacteria or a bunch group of bacteria that's really active in that, you know, high range. And people go, you got to be kidding. I'm like, no, you put your hand in my compost pile. I stuck a glove in there, you know, because it's, it's come, you know, dirty stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of warm. And I was like, went in a little deeper. And, you know, because I had that thick leather glove on, I was like, wow. It's like, oh, this is hot. Wow. I pulled the glove out and I was like, dang, 
but seeing the glove was still heating up from that amount, you know, it was a thick leather glove. And I was like, whoa, I had to pull my glove off. I did boil eggs in my compost pile. Yeah, wrapped them up in tin foil, uh, put them in a like a Tupperware that you could cook in the oven, stuck that in there and covered it, and yeah, let it go a half hour. Uh, eggs got a little dry, but I hard boiled my eggs in my compost pile because of how hot it got. But anyway, the bottom line is all that uh, nutrients in there, the bacteria eats it all down. It dies back. Your compost pile starts to, to cool off. Uh, if I did have any salmonella or uh, animal waste or any of that other stuff in there, as it climbed up through the bacteria or the temperature, it would have cooked that bacteria off. Uh, all the nutrients broke, breaks down. Everything's all good. Problem with the compost pile is a lot of your nutrients, like 90% of them leach out because they become so free from the heat and the bacteria ripping stuff apart. But the soil does pick up what's left. And uh, once you stop that process, you bring it down to what, like soil, 55, 60 degrees, uh, spread that out on top and there's still enough nutrients and you're, you're going to get your plants just awesome. Anyway, not to get totally off the mark, but yeah. I'm going to have to wonder that hydrogen sulfide more unstable if you put it in a pressure tank. Uh, people saying hi to Mark. Pigs make a lot of gas, LOL. Cows have three stomach chambers. Yeah, that's that's another good point is they, they really do need three different areas to digest food to get it really going on. Uh, one super trick, I don't know if you guys know what silage is. That's when a farmer takes hay and basically lets it rot because... As cows do have such a problem, well, grass is just really hard to break down. But anyway, silage, farmer takes his hay, lets a bunch of bacteria start to break the hay down and break down those nutrients into a more usable form. If it's in a hay pile and the hay doesn't get wet, uh, by the way, wet hay can actually catch fire because of the bacteria ramping the heat up. Anyway, but if the hay... Uh, basically stays dry and just the moisture in the air is able to slowly go in there then the bacteria starts to process it and they're basically kept at a slumber state it'll take like six months for these bacteria to break down that hay but farmers will take and create like in july package the hay up let it rot basically rot that's what it's doing and then come january about six months later they start feeding it to the cows and it's like three times uh, when you start feeding silage to cows, they've got like they get like three times the digestion rate of certain vitamins and certain minerals and certain proteins in the grass. They really get like a huge kick out of it. There is a downside to it, though. By weight, the bacteria in and of itself has taken half the grass away. So, you know, silage, you know, you're not able to come in and be like, boom, superfood. No, it's it's super great here and here. But in some instances, uh, by the way, you have to feed more of it to the cow because the bacteria has already taken like half of the goodness out. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, let's see what's going on in chat. Why? I remember watching it on something three years ago about how they were making methane power plants where they were collecting dog poop from the poop bins and the parks and collecting the zoo poop also zoo do is awesome let's see uh i forgot the joke lol mark's mark's aquarium all right I didn't even know what he said, Biggies. Was he not being funny or nice? I, I missed that. Well, I guess that's why Biggie's got a wrench. Oh. Hey, it's good for moonshine, especially when preparing the mash in the winter. 
get hay, cover a barrel, mash, spray water, and bang, you got fermented quick. Are you guys causing ruckus in my chat? I don't even know what's going on here. All right, I'm going to go up and chat and see if I missed anybody awesome. So I'll give a quick shout out to the people that aren't lurking and say thanks for not lurking in my stream. Thanks for being a part of. Uh, we got the biggies. We got uh, the Kristoff. Uh, we got me hanging out on camera. I should probably go highlight Biggie's tank or maybe uh, Kristoff's. I'm thinking I will go hi highlight Kristoff's uh, incredible uh, discus for a little while. Um, anyway, I'm gonna try to stream through chat and, uh, you know, probably forget to list off like three or four people that are in chat just to annoy you guys. Um, I don't know if, uh, Jean is still here or if she went to sleep, but Jean was chilling. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just have to call you, uh, Carlos, the, the logo maker. Uh, is chilling in the house, making awesome logos. Super double thumbs up. Uh, I haven't had a chance to check out the Tanks for Veterans logo, so I got to figure out. I think it's in a Hangouts because I didn't. Uh, I didn't see it in the. Oh, you know what? I don't think I checked the right email. I don't know. Probably too tired. Probably means I need to probably get to sleep here in a little bit. Um. But anyway, White, uh, chilling in the house. Double thumbs up for uh, you, White. I definitely enjoy uh, hearing some of the fish uh, tricks you've got going on. Uh, Aquarium Cop, I'm not sure where he went. Uh, Jenna Tucker was here for a while and took off. Um, man, I'm trying to figure out who I'm missing. Anyway, probably just means I need to get to sleep here in a little bit. Cruising down in chat. Uh, Marianne Taylor was chilling with us. Super cool. What about Bicentennial? What about by urinal beats do you think it'll help the fish i missed that comment i'm trying to figure out what by bi urinal beats are uh dpk or by natural beats all right and then we got all off track on the we can make uh explosives out of tank water i bet you could if you pull the nitrates out correctly Mark's aquarium was unbanned by white. Sorry about that, Mark. Biggie did did no one. I think Biggie's fingers slipped. Hello, it ain't my fault. I don't have a wrench. If I did, I'm sorry. I think he sorted it out. Carlos made me a new thing. I didn't see anything happen, guys. Man. Well, that's good, Mark. I don't even know what happened, so. Aquarium cop, you should keep an eye on Biggies because if Biggies isn't picking on you, then he's picking on the rest of us. Uh, train the hammer. I got the train hammer. Man. Yeah, I have to straighten some stuff out. All right, good. I got it straightened out now. All right. You know how it takes me to piss off a person. Yeah, sometimes you don't even got to do nothing. Nice logo, VSTAG. Well done, DPK. All right. Smashing. Checking out VSTAG's logo. Drop your link. All right, goofballs. Let's do this right. That's okay. I've done it by accident before. All right. All right, let's get this party rolling. All right, 
Bam, bam, bam. Oh, not that one. All right, hold on, you guys. I'm flipping screens. Not flipping out. All right, here we go. Party time. All right. Yeah, so uh, my lights are on timers. So, uh, you know, people are like, Dan, you sleep with a night light? And I go, no, I sleep with like nine fish tanks on. Hold on, let me turn my timer on. Yeah, I got four fish tanks on one timer, so... I guess I hope my fish don't mind that they're out of whack and my plants don't mind that they're going to be putting out extra oxygen. But man, now my fish are waking up and they're all wakey, wakey, up and shaky a fin. I got some incredibly beautiful fish, man. It blows my mind. All right. So got a link. We'll see who comes out of lurker status. I know, White. It's crazy. I, I did. I got caught up in chat. I want to like clap and celebrate. You guys say a lot of stuff in my chat, though, and make me get a, off the of track a lot. Was that a squirrel? Oh, no. That was a weasel. Anyway. Good times. Now, I wonder if we'll actually, actually be able to get on the topic about um, fish. I might have to go get coffee for that. Mark Arks Aquarius, where do you live? I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada. I think that's right above Washington State. Run, Carlos, run. I know I'm high, but all right. And dark, but I'm um, not that stone like biggies what are you trying to say that you're not stoned but you're high or are you trying to say that you're high and not stoned what come on you're gonna get me laughing mr comedian Did you have some NyQuil or something? Supposed to keep it G-rated, I know, but uh, I don't know what, what Biggie's is up to. No good. But we got a cop here that's supposed to regulate his friends, and Biggie's is always trying to pick on the cop. I, You know, it's all for the cause of a laugh. All right. I think I'm going to go to Christoph's uh, tank and check out some uh, beautiful uh, discus fish. It's a toss-up. Let's see what Biggie's tanks are doing. I think Biggie's is snoring in the background. He's got some beautiful fish. All right. I got three windows open. It reminds me of a uh, Cypress Hill song from Carlos. He's party at the farm. He is getting high, so high. Notes from the smile. Anyway, Mark, I don't, I don't know if you figured it out, but I live in Washington. I think I'm like right below you by like a hundred miles. I think you're on the West Coast, right? I don't know. Anyway, welcome to my stream. We'll have to do the sub sub up thing. Are you going to feed him now, Chris?
All right, you guys, I feel my eyes are getting a sleepy eyes, so uh, uh, I might have to, you know, boogie off this stream and hit a little uh, little nap time and get ready for my day today. It's kind of hard when you work nights to, you know, have a, a normal schedule, so it's like you work nights, so, you you know, it gives you a great excuse to sleep during the day and look tired as heck at nine in the morning. But I did drop the Hangouts link, so I don't know if anybody wants to come out up in the Hangouts and harass people. At least I got the Big E's in the Hangout, and uh, he's got his mic off. Thank, thankful. Just be thankful. He's not flipping more, uh, more crap to everybody. But I just remind him that the cop is watching, so that's probably what keeps him tame. And we got uh, Christoph from uh belgian in the house so that's always fun definitely cool definitely cool i'm gonna bounce over in the chat uh real quick i'm already subbed to you good deal oh you're in the middle of canada well oh well smoke at the farm What kind of smoke is going on at the farm there, Biggies? I don't want to know. Although I got to say, I live in uh, uh, Washington, so I guess most smoke around here is legal. You know, both the ancient uh, tobacco and uh, the more ancient uh, weed, if you will. Yes, tobacco was a, a medicine plant. It prevented wars. Um, you know, you'd show up and trade tobacco with the Indians and then they'd get happy and they wouldn't, uh, you know, scalp you because you had tobacco. So that's a powerful medicine, you know. I'm not going to get into the other stuff. White wake and bake. Super bomb. So if you're just joining us right now, um, Chris is uh, feeding his fish uh, by hand. And I think that's really beautiful. Um his discus are not hand shy, which I think is awesome, but his other fishes are. Some of those are the geophagus swimming around. Um, a little shy. But wow, that's some beautiful, uh, some beautiful discus. Biggie's drug man at the farm. I forget about my tank. I am never in there. And the aquarium cop is showing the bikini check. Are you saying keep it cool? Or is the bikini chick in the stream? DPK says, sweet, I can dream of fishes. I think I'm probably going to uh, watch uh, Carlos feed his discus a little more and then uh, probably uh, jump off this stream and get some sleep. And uh, I do want to say uh, very, very thankful to uh, Aquarium Cop for streaming uh, off and on yesterday, like, what, four different times? Crazy amount of fun. Very fun to see Carlos in... Uh, um, the stream, but I think what was most impressive about cop stream yesterday is somehow we were able to see a fish tank and somehow we were able to see Tim, uh, live streaming awesome music and it was all wrapped up in uh, cop stream. So I got to say thumbs up to that. And then the other thing is you had the disco lights cruising through the fish tanks. And yeah, super party time with Tim, super party time with uh, Cop. So if you ain't subbed to both those guys, I would stub up now. Uh, there's some pretty awesome people in the chat right now. Um, so you definitely want to uh, sub up to them. But yeah, you guys, I guess the bottom line is it's like 10 in the morning and uh, I'm probably going to have to get some sleep here so I can be productive tomorrow. 
Anyway, I'll give you guys. Um, Carlos says, I missed it with, with Tim. No, it was awesome. Tim was in there. He was in chat for a little while. Um, Tim was in chat for a little while, but uh, Cop was streaming his videos because Tim said, hey, you can stream my videos. And that way, Cop was able to have some incredibly awesome music in the background of the stream with the disco lights and a little bit of chat. Let's see. Uh, Mark Arcs Aquarium says, great stream. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Glad you could uh, come here and join us. Um, yeah, I wish there was a better way. You know, Google notifications sometimes shows people that I'm here. Sometimes it shows me when you guys are live streaming, but the system isn't like perfect. Carlos says, night, everyone. Much love. Well, much love back to you, Carlos. Definitely, definitely. Thank you again for uh, the logo. Guppy fish guy email and look for it. I think last night I was tired and I was looking for it in my other email. I only have like four Gmails, uh, a Hotmail, a Yahoo, and another one. Dang it anyway. Anyway, let's see. Uh, DPK, it was amazing. Time came on. I know it's supposed to say Tim, but it says time. So I'm just laughing. Super fun, you guys. Needs needs someone to piss off now. I know, Biggies. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go to sleep, man. It's terrible. Chris says, "Yes, Carlos. Thanks. You saw I can caress them a bit with one finger. Yeah, that's that's really beautiful. I think I did a 600 shout out on Aquarium Cop stream. My fingers got tired." <laughs> That's a lot of people to shout out to. Chris Channel, last uh, time out. All right, you guys, I'm going to uh, run and take care of some stuff in my kitchen real quick. And then uh, back and say goodnight to everybody. Um, but I'll be back in a flash. i got to mess with the dog and some other stuff. But hopefully you guys in chat can uh, say your goodnight to everybody in chat to stream next so I can go to sleep with a double thumbs up uh, yeah if you're still here I just want to say thank you thank you again for joining me on my crazy chat about fish life whales orcas pissed off people bombs man I hope I don't get a letter from you guys were talking about that stuff not me man but all kinds of stuff gets uh, talked about outside of fish. But I guess in the end, the biggest and most important thing that we talked about tonight was how to stay happy. So you guys got like, you know, two more minutes talking about how to stay happy. And uh, thank you guys for helping me. Uh, well, just plain stay happy. The name of my stream. And being the happy fish guy. The name of my channel. Thanks.
All right, did you guys figure out any awesomeness in my absence? Who's going to stream next? The question is to be, to be or not to be? All right, let's see what I missed. Chris channel, I already read that one. Chris is, Biggie says, Chris's channel last week, timeout. Biggies, think about get out of bed. Well, that'd be good, Biggies. Chris says, good night, Dan. Have a sweet and good rest. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you for being here, and thank you for showing off your beautiful discus. Biggies says, am both. Chris says, sorry for my rude words, but I grow up in a rude world. Not at home. Well, yeah, I guess sometimes it's hard on the translation. But you talked about beautiful things. So, I mean, I've always dreamed about being with, I don't know, a Brazilian lady. I've always dreamed about going anywhere out of America. I haven't made it there yet. Well, Canada, but I, yeah, they're just like Northern Americans. I'm kidding, Canadians. But, yeah, you know, you're in North America still. So, you're like a Northern American. I hate, yeah. People are like, no, we are Canadians. I'm like, no, you're Northern Americans. Anyway, they speak French in some areas up there. So they're like, we're French. We're like, no, you're just Americans that speak French. I like teasing foreigners. Anyway. You're fine, Chris. Uh, I'm not, I'm up, not in the room. All right, piggies, but you're still able to type, right? You got to be somewhere close to your computer. Always love you guys. Take care, Chris. Later, Chris. All right, let's see if I'm missing any other awesomeness. All right, you guys. I think I'm going to call this tonight. Um, let me go up in my hangouts real quick. So, got the cop, got the biggies, got the Kristoff, and got the Dan. I guess we're missing the Gene and the White and a few other awesome people. But, uh, all right, anybody else got to say any more awesomeness? Okay, Dan. Can you hear me, Dan? Yep, yep. Biggie's clear, loud and clear. Let's highlight you. Let's highlight me. Yeah, they've got the fish comedian on the big screen. No, you funny. Well, you got to tell us. Bed. You got to tell us a joke but before I go. What joke is that? Everybody had a blessed day? Or Some, night or evening. Something awesome. Mm -mm. I'm going back to my bed. This cop just come back online. I see his picture. I asked him earlier what he was cooking. He said pizza. What kind of pizza was said, he cooking? You gonna hang up a barn door for your bathroom? Eventually, I will. That'd be I gotta get something. Hang up a barn door. I like being able to walk through the door because it makes me feel like Superman. Walking nah, through a wall. You just put barn door up. I'm walking through the wall. I mean, I know I'm walking through a current, uh, a curtain, but I still feel feel good. That's country style right there with the with the with the um curtain. It's just super ghetto because I don't have anybody in my room, you know. Well, I do. I do have people in my room, but you know, I just like go down the hall to use the restroom. That's my personal commode in there. I'm sorry. But that's where uh. A lot of people still do got curtains hanging up on the, and, and, and going into the bedrooms and bathrooms. That's nothing new. Everybody don't have doors. I used to live with this uh, this roommate, and, like, 
when people would come over and like try to use the bathroom, we'd be like, listen, man, you need to go home or you need to go to Safeway. So we lived like a block from Safeway and he would seriously like, no, no, <laughs> I used to no, laugh. No, no, my bathroom. Like, no blowing up my bathroom. I would laugh. He'd like make you walk to Safeway. But yeah, he would like it was bad because people come in, go in, they'd sneak into the bathroom. They'd be like, "You don't have toilet paper." And he's like, "Nope, nope. You're going to Safeway. We're out. Go get some." So, anyway, I need to probably end this stream and get to bed. But I just want to say thanks to the biggies, and uh, I want to say thanks to the cop, and I want to say thanks to Chris. Because you guys all make me have an incredibly big smile. Yeah, Hold on, let's. Uh, all right, so I just came online anyway. So hey, back and let's switch over to him. Yep, yep. I just want to make a quick announcement that Multi Tank Addiction is on now, and uh, yeah, I was gonna say somebody drop a link but i think it's probably easy enough for you guys to just find uh uh multi-tank addiction and just pop over there and i'm gonna yep. pop to sleep you can go nighty night yep yep all right aquarium cop thanks for finding that fantastic information it's been super super fun so everybody uh bottom line uh stay happy Feastag says, uh, DPK Aquariums, could I get you to use your skills to make my friend a logo? Dude, it'll blow you away, Feastag, how awesome his logos are. Man, I just feel like super blessed. All right. Uh, I wonder if Carlos. What have you been doing? You talked to her lately? The what? Joy. No, I, she's too crazy for me. I can only see her probably like I was thinking once a week, but I was thinking, nah, Dan, you could probably only see a chick like that every couple of weeks to keep your life. A couple of months. Cool. Maybe she's a crazy gal. She is. And see, uh, what type, what, what Indian tribe is she from? Um, I think she's uh she's called she's uh uh what is it Yakima Nez Pierce. Okay. I knew she was Indian, but I didn't know what to, I, I didn't want to ask that night. Yeah. I asked you when I see you by your sound. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a beautiful, beautiful skinned gal, but definitely, yeah, it's got some craziness going on. I knew that when she was dancing all around with the blue thing on her. Yeah. She started climbing up to that tower and like, oh, she know that's an old ass bill with rotten floors. That scared the crap out of me. I hope they don't fall to the floor. Oh no, I I I go all through that building and make sure it's cool. I figured you did. I'm like a rat in that place. That's what my boss says. He's like, dude, you're just everywhere in this place. I go, yep. Anyway, it's, just... it's some trap. It's, it's some rooms that nobody lost in there. They've been covered up. In that church? Yep. Nah. It always do be some trap rooms, some places in you know, them old churches. There's People only there's cover it up and forgot about them. Well, there is a couple places that are covered up, but I've uncovered them. I guess that's the point. <laughs> You'll and find them eventually. Oh yeah. All right, you guys. I should probably go. I see Aquarium Cop says that uh, MTA is live plucking a duck or a goose. Oh. I'm on how many mean, he got. I don't know. Left out early this morning. Oh, they let me go itching my. All right, you guys, I'm going to have to jump out of here real quick. Thanks. All right, then, Dan. Have a good sleep. Oh, I am. You one day next week if you get time to go back on. 
Well, I might have to get to go on tonight. We'll just have to see what all happens. If you wake up in time. Yeah. But I do got to work tonight, too, again. So that's going to kind of suck. That kind of puts a damper. But maybe uh, I'll be at that church tonight. So we'll see what kind of fun I can have. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is uh, Dan, the happy fish guy, uh, hanging out with Biggie's, the fish comedian, uh, making everybody smile and laugh. Uh, we got the aquarium cop chilling, keeping the peace for everybody. And we got the Christoph out in Belgium. Uh, we'll highlight his beautiful discus fish. But once again, I just want to say I'm Dan, the happy fish guy. And thanks for joining in on a little uh, fish fam love session. This fish is still there? Oh, the there you go. No, I that's... was wondering if this fish is still there. There they go. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that tank. Man, it is. It's real nice and simple. It just looks like the bottom of a river somewhere. I know. It was natural. Nice. All right, everybody. This is uh, Dan. I'm uh, stopping the broadcast and uh, signing out. You guys, much, much love. And thank you. Thank you again for being a part of my life and making it awesome.